All right. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will call to order. Mr. Clerk, do we have a quorum? Uh, yes, we do. So we have no uh, items under Committee of the Whole closed meeting. Um, do we have adds, Mr. Clerk? There are no adds to approve. Are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Councillor Bohm. I, Ryan Bohm, of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Clinks, Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of Clause 1, Report Number 38, Page 7, from the previous Council meeting. As an employee of Utilities Kingston, it may be perceived that I have a pecuniary interest in that matter. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other disclosures of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we have no presentations tonight, uh, but we do have two delegations. So at this time, I will uh, invite Noor Huda, George Thompson, and Sylvia O'Rourke from the Students Commission of Canada, uh, who will appear before Council to speak to Clause 1, Report Number 44, received from the Chief Administrative Officer Recommend, with respect to the Y2K Kingston Youth Strategy. So welcome, and just a note to all of our delegations that you have five minutes. Thank you very much, Your Worship, members of Council. As the Mayor has indicated, my name is uh, George Thompson. I'm the uh, adult chair of the Voices Table, which is one of the four action tables that are connected to this Y2K initiative. And with me is Noor Huda, who is the uh, Voices Table Youth Facilitator. She's also someone who's been very active in much and many of the coordination activities of the Y2K strategy and is also very much involved in her community, her mosque, and a number of community activities such as the Rainbow Coalition. So we will be very brief, as the Mayor has said. Uh, you will have received extensive material that talks about the youth strategy. You will know that this work is done with your support and to, the initial work was to develop a youth strategy that was approved in 2013. You now have before you a report that summarizes the work done in the first year of implementation of this strategy uh, and setting out all of the activities and all of the persons who've been involved and organizations involved in those activities over that first year. And as you know, the hard part of any strategy is the implementation stage, and I can report that there's enormous work being done by the youth and others involved in this strategy uh, to implement it. There are four action tables, there's a steering team that has important uh, representatives from the city on that steering team as well. Uh, it's working collaboratively, collaboratively, on, uh, collaboratively on 16 of the uh, 17 recommendations um, and is involved in a large number of specific activities as part of that. There's strategic guidance from the uh, student commission um, and um, good mentoring from city staff and uh, a number of community organizations, and in fact, 73 community organizations are now part of supporting this initiative. Your funding support has been very important in this, as well as the mentoring, uh, and it has particularly helped with the collaborative activities that have involved youth in, a, in an increasing number of activities in the community. It has also, that support has leveraged a lot of other funding support from a number of organizations, as well as in-kind support. And I might say the mayor's uh, indication of youth issues as a particularly important part of your work and an important initiative has also helped a great deal, as well as councillor involvement in a number of the public activities of the Y2K strategy. So we are here to ask uh, uh, for your support going into the second year of this initiative. Uh, it, will, it will involve supporting a number of activities that are set out in the report. And I would just say finally for me that this, I've been most impressed as a person who's come in the last year to this work of the youth. They've inspired me a great deal and, I, and their work I think is inspiring many others. And now I'll ask Noor to say a few words. Um, so as George talked about, we had many different events and I'm just gonna tell you about a few of them and the impact that they had. So one of them that I remember the most is the carnival we had uh, last summer, which me and another youth facilitator who were hired to work for the summer planned. And we really engaged youth in planning this carnival and they um, not only got to pick, like tell us which organizations they wanted to see there, they also planned all the games and stuff. So throughout this whole process, we've had youth planning the event and then there was a lot, of, it was 
a lot of excitement built up towards the event, so we had a really great turnout. And um, what happened was like the youth and the community got to get in touch with over 14 organizations in the city, which was really nice. And I remember afterwards, some of the people from the organizations came to me and Sam, who was the other worker, and said um, they'd never um, got to meet so many people from the community and touch base with so many of them. So that's one of um, the great impacts it had with uh, collaborating the youth and the community and the many organizations. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> And um, another big uh, part of Y2K has been the role of the Kingston police. And they've hired a, um, a youth police officer. And he's, they've been working a lot with youth and they've had their, sorry, they've had um, recently uh, a little camp for training for, sorry, I'm losing my words, but they've, done a lot of in involvement in the community as well. And another important event we had was the Youth Forum. And the goal for this was to get youth more civically engaged. So we had um, a mayoral debate, or a mayoral um, talk where the youth got to ask the candidates questions that they were concerned about. and. This was great, but um, I think what really impacted the youth was just seeing the mayoral candidates and them being there. And I know um, Mayor Patterson has come out to many of our events and they always ask like, oh, is he coming to this event? And it's, I think it's just important to know that he's there and that he's part of our community and supporting us. And I think the youth really have valued that. Um, 30, and, 30 seconds. Okay. And the, another recent thing we're working on is with the deputy clerk. We're work, working with him to plan local government week, which is really exciting. So we have a lot of different things going on, and you can find it in the report, but that was just a few of the highlights that I could name for you guys. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the delegation? Councillor Shell. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Sort of in general, would you say that the um, the Y2K is sort of to help established groups work together for youth, sort of as a, a helping to bring the, the various groups together, um, and uh, sort of to know, or is it also to help these various groups in town know who they are as well, like the, the various groups, that you're actually helping them know Children's Aid and United Way, you know, that they may not have known about as much about each other as they did till before you uh, came yeah. on the scene? Would yeah, that be fair? definitely. Um, I think one example of this would be the youth librarian. She came to the carnival as well, as well and she brought like books for youth, but we, she met a lot of teen moms there and she got the idea of like having programs for them as well. So I think it helps the organizations themselves grow and collaborate with each other, so I think it's really and and yes to echo what you really said to us it's it's been a two-way process the organizations and the adults including myself who've been involved in this learning from the youth the youth learning from us and together collaborating on initiatives to support youth so i think you're well on the way to being a model of what a youth-friendly city might look like at the end of this exercise uh deputy mayor holland thank you your worship uh so the, in terms of the, the work that you've done and planning a lot of events um, and coordinating different groups, what sort of challenges have you encountered and do you see, how do you see yourselves being able to adapt to those challenges in the future? Okay. Um, so some of the challenges I think would be, um, maybe you can speak to it, Chris, yeah. I'm gonna think about it. Well, I, I think it, as, first of all, once we move into implementation, then those who were very much part of the initial strategy needed to remain involved, and then we need to add more and more youth as we go through implementation. So the challenge has been to identify ways and activities for more and more youth to become involved and to have more and more organizations become connected to the work. So the real strategy is to think of it as an adult youth partnership in many of the things we're doing and ensuring we have both adults and youth at these activities learning from one another. 
And that's a slow process, but we're, I, we're making some real progress, or they're making some real progress with our support. Yeah, thank you. Okay, seeing no other questions, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our second delegation this evening is Suzanne Cliff jungling who will appear before council to speak to clause two, report number 44, received from Chief Administrative Officer recommend with respect to the proposed Valor District. Dear Mayor and Councillors, thank you for this opportunity for me to speak tonight. I am here because of the proposal to establish a Valor District in Kingston. And I would like to talk to you about why I am, opposed to, I am opposed to such an idea. I grew up in West Germany. My generation is called the Dritte Generation. We are the grandchildren of the war generation. I am a product of the process that was started by the Allies, a process to denazify and re-educate Germany. At the time, there was a strong sense among the victors that to find sustaining and lasting peace in Europe, German society had to be re-educated, had to develop strong democratic institutions and, engaged, and an engaged citizenry. So in school, we were taught to mistrust war, to question military conflicts, and to question the role of the military in society. My generation learned to mistrust efforts to glorify war. We were taught to mourn all victims of war. We were taught that war must not be repeated and it was our responsibility to work for peace. We were taught that war is not and never will be an act of valor. There was to be no remembering fallen soldiers as heroes. Growing up in Germany, we learned that it, is a that it is dangerous for society to focus on its military accomplishments and to promote ideas of military valor. Glorifying war was seen as in invariably leading to more military conflicts and legitimizing sending soldiers out to fight. If fighting in war is a brave and valiant thing, then why not do it again and again and again? It is therefore ironic for me to live here in Kingston and to find the city council considering naming a Valor district. It seems so contradictory to the Allied message to Germans after the Second World War. I hope that council will accept the staff report and not support the creation of a Valor district in Kingston at this time and from my point of view ever. Let us instead recognize the tragedy of war and commit ourselves to the pursuit of peace without the pretense that war is glorious. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the delegation? Seeing none, thank you very much. So we have no briefings tonight. Uh, are there any petitions to present? Seeing none, uh, we do have a motion of condolence. Moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Holland, that the condolences of Kingston City Council be extended to Ann Thompson, Technology Associate, Information Tech Systems and Technology Department on the passing of her mother, Dorothy Mary Thompson. Our thoughts are with Ann during this difficult time. So we will call the question. Please vote. And that carries. We have no deferred motions tonight. So next I will ask for report number 43 from the Chief Administrative Officer, Consent. Moved by Councilor Turner, second by Councilor Bohm, the report number 43 from the Chief Administrative Officer, consent be received and adopted. So there are five clauses. Would anyone like any of them separated? Councilor McLaren. So D has been separated. Seeing no other items to separate, we, oh. Councillor Stroud. A. 
So we've separated A and D, so I'll first call the question on items B, C, and E. Item B is the Williamsville Area Parking Bylaw Amendments. Item C is the Parking Bylaw Minor Amendments. And item E is the 2015 Final Tax Levy and Tax Rates. We'll call the vote. And that carries. Item A, Homestead Land Holdings Request for Noise Exemption 745 Highway 15. Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I uh, briefly, uh, my reason for separating this is to address the request for the 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. exemption. I read the letters, uh, the, three, the three letters from residents who were opposed to the idea, and I agree with them that it's, uh, it's on an un unnecessary exemption, so I will not be supporting this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? I see none. We will call the vote. And that carries by a vote of 12 to 1. Item D, declare surplus 292 Dalton Avenue for transfer to employment lands inventory. Councillor McLaren. Thank you. May I ask staff if this sale of this land to someone will in any way affect or hinder the development of the K&P trail that I understand goes very close to this parcel of land? Commissioner Hurdle. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, no, we have reviewed this, uh, this potential um, option and it won't impact the ability to build a KMP trail. We do have a few different options for the KMP trail in that area, so we have reviewed that and it won't have an impact on our ability to complete the KMP trail in that area. Thank you. I will support this very wholeheartedly then. Okay, we will call the vote. And that carries. Report number 44 from the Chief Administrative Officer, recommend. It's moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor George. The report number 44 from the Chief Administrative Officer, recommend, be received and adopted, clause by clause. So there are three clauses. The first is the Y2K Kingston Youth Strategy. We will call the vote. That carries. Number two is the proposed Valor District. Councillor Osanek. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to thank staff very much for um, seeking permission from the Royal Canadian Legion for using the red poppy for pricing out the signs and uh, also for collecting the 121 comments. Um, getting comments, you know, 121 comments, um, it shows that email was an effective means of gathering the input, and that was definitely um, a good response rate. We don't get a lot of public meetings that 121 people um, attend and also provide comments, and I really appreciate staff time doing that. Um, for those that haven't read the report, the comments came back 50-50, basically an even split of um, for and against, and I totally respect that. And I support the motion um, from the recommendation from staff to uh, defer this initiative. Thank you. Councillor Neal. Thank you. And I also support the, the uh, recommendation to defer. I guess my only question to staff is um, I've heard from uh, members within the proposed district that they felt um, that there hadn't been a public meeting, there hadn't been an opportunity for those in, the, in that specific district to speak to it. And I know it's a citywide recognition, but indeed it most affects those in the immediate neighborhood. So I was wondering if at a future date there'll be an intention 
to have such a public meeting with with the neighborhood. Commissioner Hurdle. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we, we do recognize in the report that there was limited time to do actually uh, consultation because of the time to report back to council. So that was noted in the report. And once the, um, the commemoration strategy has been endorsed and this has been prioritized against other city projects and initiatives, if this is something that was to move forward at that time, you would do additional public consultation before bringing something back to council. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Just a follow-up question to staff. Uh, do we have any idea of the timing, the approximate timing of completing the commemoration strategy and the process of weighing against our other priorities when we might expect to hear back from staff? Uh, Commissioner Beach? The uh, commemoration strategy is proposed to come back at, at the end of Q2. Um, we're working on a public consultation strategy now for that policy, so it, it may come to council a little bit later because we have to go to a couple of committees and we're also working on the public consultation, but approximately the end of June or, or to council in July. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, we will call the vote. And that carries. Item three is the Wellington Street Extension Alternative Evaluation. Are there any comments or questions? Councilor Stroud. I have, I have a question for, I guess, uh, staff uh, that I've already asked beforehand, but uh, I'd just like to uh, hear a quick uh, summary. So. Uh, what would happen exactly, and I only want the answer to this one question, if uh, the, two, uh, the two things in this recommendation were separated and we did one now, the one that's first chronological order, and we did the other one later, what, what would happen if we did that? Mr. Van Buren. Uh, through you, Mayor Patterson. <clears throat> Uh, it is possible to have these two pieces of work done uh, in sequence or, or separate. Uh, the recommendation of staff, though, is that we would look to, to combine these efforts because there would certainly be the potential for some economies of scale in that uh, both the secondary planning work and the update to the EA could be done in a manner in which both of those component pieces of work are, are synchronized together. Um, so that could reflect in some actual cost savings as it relates to the overall project. Um, I think the other, the other issue to keep in mind as well uh, is that the overall timelines are likely to be extended if the work is done uh, separate. So you conclude the secondary planning effort first before you undertake an EA update. Uh, it's quite likely that the 24 a month uh, that we have identified in this report would be extended beyond that. And then thirdly, it still leaves a, a potential issue in terms of not having some clarity or definition around the Wellington Street extension in the interim period. Thank you, and just as a quick uh, follow-up, uh, so hypothetically, if we separated the two items, voted uh, the earlier one in today, and uh, with the other one, could it, would it automatically come back at a later time, or could we ask for it to come back in, say, a month, uh, without actually saying so today? Uh, could we, say, a month from now, with a notice of motion, ask for staff to give us the, to come back with the second uh, recommendation at that time? Again, through you, Mayor Patterson, I, I think that would be at the prerogative of council to decide uh, the timing for when they would like to see the second component or the update to the EA come back. Councillor Shell. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I finally figured out the question I need to ask. <laughs> because environmental assessments have to do with a project. And when we discussed the secondary plan, I kept thinking, well, we wouldn't have a project to assess other than the Wellington Street that's on the books. So my question is, 
under this proposal, while the secondary plan is being worked on, is the theory that some transportation uh, improvements might be flagged that would require an environmental assessment and that that could be, that's where this whole idea of environmental assessment would be working in conjunction, the two could work together? Ms. second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that would be correct. When you go through the process of completing a secondary plan, which is essentially a very detailed study that looks at a functional land use plan for a specified area. So when you go through that process, there are a lot of considerations. Transportation is certainly one of them. When you create the functional land use plan, it has to be supported by a transportation network that actually works to circulate the traffic through the area. So as part of the development of the secondary plan, which would include transportation assessment that would be done as well as servicing, environmental assessments to look at um, any type of uh, parks, uh, different types of uh, trees, all of that type of thing that may be in the area, that does become part of the analysis and that could feed into a, an eventual uh, environmental assessment should some type of road network be flagged through that process that requires that level of assessment to be completed. Thank you. So I can just be clear that literally while the secondary plan is being worked on, environmental assessments w would also start to be worked on because of that that is part of the process. Um, so it's an environmental assessment isn't specifically part of a secondary plan. If the secondary plan identifies a road network that has an arterial road or a level of road that requires an environmental assessment, that process can be undertaken concurrently and that's what staff is recommending so that we have the synergies between the two projects happening, the information feeding into one another and also a joint uh, public consultation program that could feed into both projects while they're happening on a parallel time frame. And just one more clarification then. So when you talk in, in the report, it talks about a Wellington Street extension environmental uh, assessment. That is part of the whole process you're, you're talking about? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, so what staff is recommending is that we undertake a secondary planning process for the Inner Harbor and the old industrial area. So as part of that analysis, currently the official plan policies as they are now, they identify the Wellington Street corridor as a completed EA. So in the process of doing the secondary plan analysis, it would be prudent to, once we have um, all of the primary things established in the secondary plan, like the goals, the visions, what uh, our key areas of emphasis are, what, our, um, what the things are that we want to see as our key values associated with the way the plan develops, that could feed into the EA process. Thank you for that clarification. It has been a very confusing time. Um, there was, was one other thing that I noticed in the 1984 uh, land use study for the Inner Harbor that included a council objective to make waterfront more accessible to the population. And that actually isn't specifically in um, the report here. It talks about parks and, and uh, natural areas, but it doesn't actually specifically make one of the criteria um, waterfront more accessible to the population. So I hope that can be included. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just to follow up on that, so there are a number of considerations. As you know, our official plan is over 300 pages, so there's a ton of information in there that deals with uh, the priorities and the vision of the community and our strategic priorities, one of them being in and around park development and waterfront availability to the public. So as part of doing the secondary plan, the foundational piece of that is looking at what is in your official plan because that gives you that foundational piece for your secondary plan to build on. The secondary plan becomes an amendment to the official plan. So any type of policies that you develop for the secondary plan have to coincide with the overall vision of the official plan unless the municipality decides to amend that as well. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor McLaren. Thank you. So based on a lot of the stuff that I heard here, I think it's wise that uh, I move an amendment to this uh, report, to the uh, that clauses. 
which I've given to the clerk. Would you like me to read it out? Okay. That the first that clause be amended by removing, quote, and the update to the Wellington Street Extension Environmental Study Report dated May 2006 in accordance with the Ontario Municipal Class Assessment, Environmental Assessment Process, unquote, so that it reads that council directs staff to prepare and request for proposals to undertake an exceptional forward thinking, livable, green and innovative secondary plan for the, har for the inner harbour and the old industrial area, and unquote. That the second, that clause be amended by removing, quote, and the update to the Wellington Street Extension Environmental Study Report, unquote, so that it reads that Council approve an upper limit budget of 750000 to complete an exceptional forward-thinking livable green and innovative secondary plan for the Inner Harbour and Old Industrial Area with funding in the amount of 180000 from the Municipal Capital Reserve Fund, 120. Thousand from the development charges fund and 450,000 reallocated from the approved capital budget within the planning, building, licensing service department. Okay, so there's a motion to amend that's been put forward by Councillor McLaren. Is there a seconder? Was there a seconder on that? Oh, yes, Councillor Stroud is seconded. Okay, so uh, Councillor McLaren, you have the floor if you'd like to speak to the amendment. Thank you. So considering that the CAO report is not in, we're not entirely 100% sure the best way to go forward. This was a report that was requested back in March uh, 3rd, I believe. Uh, it seems that it should come after the secondary plan, and as uh, Councillor Shell pointed out, they work concurrently. So if we have this particular EA, it is feeding into the secondary plan, but we don't really want to have a biased report we would like to have a fresh, clean start, a blue sky uh, start to looking at the secondary plan. If we have an old plan, an old EA, helping to service that report, I think that would be a step backwards. Furthermore, um, after the goal, af uh, the goals, plans, and the second e uh, the secondary plan may affect the EA, and we would like them actually to affect it in a positive way. You know forward-looking way, not in a backwards-looking way. Furthermore, the EA, since it feeds into the second plan, it's biased, sorry, I've already said that, and the second plan, secondary plan is an amendment to the official plan. We're in the process of updating the official plan. This would seem to be the more important concurrent task to go with the secondary plan than an EA at this time. Additionally, uh, the extra adjectives that were put in there, such as exceptional forward-thinking, livable green, are meant to, go inside, to coincide with the strategic plan that we have just passed, or we're about to pass today. Have we passed? No, which will pass. And uh, move Kingston in a more forward-looking direction in which we don't think about urban planning policies of the 1950s, but of the 21st century. For those reasons, I hope that you will support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the amendment only? Uh, Councillor Neal. Thank you. Um, I, I'm in support of the amendment. I think it, um, I had some reservations at first because the, uh, what I read as the intent of the motion that came forward in March was that we would have an opportunity and staff would assist us in looking at alternatives to the Wellington Street extension. And by, uh, including the Wellington Street extension in conjunction with or, or in parallel with uh, the this, this secondary, secondary plan. I think that that uh, may raise some questions about uh, the, the ability for this to be a fresh look without consideration of a previous plan. I also like the, this amendment because it doesn't preclude any member of council, we won't require reconsideration with the wording of this. Uh, the chair can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at any time we could come forward with uh, a request for a renewal R RFP because that we aren't specifically voting, voting that down. 
Uh, so my only question to staff and perhaps to the mover and seconder, and this may lead to an amendment to an amendment, um, $750,000 was the total amount for both. If we are removing, if the recommendation here is to remove uh, the one, then the, the money that we would require for doing that first portion of the project is actually 600,000. And would it be just as easy if this motion passes when an RFP request for renewal comes forward, if indeed it does in the future, we could request the money at that time, the $150,000. Uh, so do we need the $750,000 in this motion if we're cutting out that body of work in the immediate future? Commissioner that Beach. That would be my question. Commissioner Beach. I think the first piece that I just would like to clarify in the motion is that the amount that's funded in that motion under the Development Charges Reserve Fund, if you're taking out the EA portion, you cannot fund that portion of the study. So you'd have to, if you want to leave the upper limit at 750, you have to fund that from the Municipal Capital Reserve Fund and not from the development charges. I don't know if... Uh, Another staff person, Mark Van Buren, may want to answer the question about if you remove it, how, what the budget would be. Mr. Van Buren. Um, Ms. Beach is correct in that the, uh, the portion of funding that was going to be derived from the development charges was to go towards the EA update. So that had a budget of $150,000, uh, 80% of which the funding could be coming from development charges. So um, if the, the motion is uh, just solely directed at the secondary plan, as Ms. Beach indicated, the, the funding would need to come from Municipal Capital Reserve and not from development charges. So if we recognized that now, if this passes, this, none of the $600,000 for the secondary uh, study could come from that, is that accurate? That's correct. Okay, I believe there may be a motion coming forward that addresses that. I'm having somebody sending me seminar so, message here, so. So staff have clearly indicated that there is an inconsistency that would need to be addressed if this motion to amend passes. So we'll confine our debate and comments right now to just the motion to amend, understanding that if that passes, then we'll have to have a further discussion at that point. It's not necessarily to get into that right at the moment. Um, Thank ne you. Next on my list is Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, uh, Councillor Neal. I, I do have a, bu a, a budgetary amendment that only talks about the numbers uh, here. I guess you want me to bring that up later? Yes. Okay, so just about the intent of the motion, it's pretty clear, just to recap, in case anyone's lost. Uh, all that this does, even though Councillor McLaren read it all out, the only difference between this and the original motion is that he's removed all references to the uh, Wellington Street Extension EA uh, update and all accompanying language. And he's added the forward-thinking uh, uh, language that that you see there. Uh, that are the only; those are the only changes from the original motion. Just just to point that out. Uh, so, I would just very much prefer to deal with these two things separately because it's two very different things, and I think that it's not uh, fair to the people of Kingston that have already come to the public meeting, uh, many of them, uh, dozens of them, uh, and plus all the emails that everyone has received. To, to, to do these two things together in this way, even though it's logical and I completely accept staff's explanations for why, uh, why it would be uh, recommended to do it this way, I think we really need to have, from the political side, we need to uh, acknowledge uh, the reality that we find ourselves in with some very, uh, very logical and caring uh, people uh, speaking out against the road itself, and so when we order a, an EA update, that's uh, an EA that has that was done to 
to determine what uh, what kind of road we should build. Um, I think that it's not really uh, it's something we should enter into lightly. And uh, seeing as it's my understanding from my earlier questions to staff that there is no irreversible uh, damage to uh, the, the, the door is still open. We can we can get an EA update at any time if we so choose. But I think we need to have the debate separately. And so if we just this amendment, if we pass it, it essentially would uh, move us back to the idea of just ordering the secondary plan first. That's the entree, the, the first item on the, on the menu. And then later on, if we're still hungry, we can order the next course, which would be the EA update. Uh, also, we could also see maybe a little bit, uh, staff might be coming back with feedback that would indicate that the EA update is needed right now at this time, and then we could, so we could order it at, at that time. Uh, we could have that debate separately from, from the debate for the secondary plan, which I believe uh, should get uh, majority support here tonight for the secondary plan, which I support myself. So that essentially sums up my position why I think it's very important to do these two things separately. So I support the amendment. Next on my list is Councillor George. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I believe that we should be moving forward with both because I believe they dovetail together. And we're not going to get the answers we want, truly need, in order to make a proper decision if we don't do it in that fashion. I think historically we have found that that's been the case. Um, so it, it, it only makes sense to do the two for a number of reasons. And I think one of them, it's a cost benefit to us. Uh, but it will also give us the meat and potatoes that we need to make the decision rather than getting a partial response and then having to order the balance of it and looking at what those costs are going to be. Um, uh, the other thing, I, I really don't, I don't see the point of amending what's before us. So I think it's, it's giving direction to staff. We just went through our strategic planning process. Staff has a clear understanding of what it is we, as a, as a council want to see when we talk about being forward thinking and, and a livable city and such. Those are some of the, uh, the key trademarks that are within our uh, strategic plan. And uh, so I, you know, as much as I, you know, it looks to me like uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pretty words and such, uh, the way it's worded here, I, I don't think it's needed. Um, the other question I, do have for staff, but I may want to wish to see, wait and see if this goes through or not, um, is re in regards to the reallocated funds of $350,000, because I have a concern, not that I won't support this initiative, but I do want to know what are we now not going to see uh, dealt with over the next couple of years because of the fact that we already approved that funding in our capital budget. Now we're staff are doing what we've asked them to do and that is to find funding for this so they're reallocating money but what are we losing i'd like to know that as well but um i really can't approve that i don't think it's going to give us any more any more than what we're already being asked to support here um staff fully understand what it is that uh the community wants to see and what we as a council have decided is our strategic you know, challenge and vision for the future. So uh, I'm not going to support this for a simple reason. I think it's just, uh, you know, it's just something we don't need to get into. It's just kind of stirring the pot up a little bit. I'd just like to see it, it left as is. Staff know what it is they need to do and uh, send them on their way and let them get the work done. They're the, they're the experts in the field. We can ask them all the questions that we want, pending the, uh, the depending on the way we word the question is the way we get the answer. And uh, I would just like to see it left is. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hurdle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to, um, I know there have been obviously a lot of discussions about doing this in, in two separate um, kind of phases. So the, um, the uh, secondary plan first and potentially an EA later. Um, and there have been discussions about the budget as well. So if, as indicated in the report, if council decided that they wanted to get the secondary plan done at this point only, we've indicated in the report that that's a total of $600,000. And we currently have approved in our budget um, 450,000 that was going to be used for secondary planning work. 
and part of that was actually going to be used in the old industrial area. Not all of it, because we, what we're looking at right now is an expanded area from what we originally had in our scope of work. So what, we, what you're looking at in terms of secondary plan now is larger than what we initially anticipated. But that money is already approved. And, and really what you're talking about is topping that up by $150,000. Obviously that would be coming from the, uh, the Municipal Capital Reserve Fund to make the difference for what, uh, what you need. Uh, for the secondary plan, if that's where you so choose to go. Commissioner Beach. So just to clarify in the motion to make it a proper um, funding, the 180 would have to be reduced to 150, and the reference to the 120 from the development charges would have to be removed. Okay. Next on my list is Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Apart from what seems to be now an obvious need for an amendment to the amendment, um, I'm speaking really just to the amendment and the fact that I support it, um, mainly because I think it's necessary to have the, the wording in there that is being suggested in order to uh, provide more of an emphasis on the potential for expanding transit. Um, for example, I would love to see all kinds of development plans focused on an express bus service along Montreal Street, um, which doesn't currently exist and I know is potentially, uh, well, in the works. So knowing that that is a sort of future objective that we have, um, I think it's important to emphasize the, the green aspect in, that's been put forward here, um, the green livable city that we've been talking about at strategic planning. And secondly, I think that this wording is important because I know it, it suggested in the report that one of the reasons for having this EA update is that it could potentially deal with some of the um, challenges at OMB if we don't proceed in a certain process along this planning road, pardon the pun. Um, I think we also have to acknowledge the fact that there is a potential for an OMB challenge from, uh, from citizens, from residents, if we are not, if our planning does not reflect our principles of the the PPS and the and the official plan and and I think that adding this sort of wording will help with that will help make us less vulnerable to a challenge coming from the other direction so thanks thank you um, deputy mayor Holland will you take the chair I will and I recognize you okay so based on the previous comments from staff uh, I, I am of the mind now that it would be better to amend this amendment, so I'm going to use my time to quickly put up a very simple motion to amend the amendment if I have a seconder. The motion, and excuse me that I don't have this written down, I wasn't expecting to have to do this, but um, the motion would say to delete the figure 750,000, replace with a figure of 600,000, to change 180,000 from the Municipal Capital Reserve Fund to 150,000 and to delete 120,000 from the Development Charges Reserve Fund. If I have a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Bohm. Um. So you have the chair. Um, any any discussion on the amendment to amend? Councillor Stroud? I'm uh, wholeheartedly in favor of the amendment as it is 100% identical to the one I have here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we should give some credit to staff who wrote the report and actually put the numbers in there. It's actually a formula, you just subtract the numbers from the numbers and you, that was pretty impressive the, the, the way you came up with that on the fly though quite impressed, but you have a PhD or something. So yeah. Anyway, thank you, Your Worship. Any more discussion on the amendment to amend? Seeing none, I'll call the question. And it passes unanimously. 
So now we're moving back to the motion to amend. And do I return the chair? Uh, no, if you can hold on to the chair and I'm going to speak to the okay. motion as amended. Thank you. A um, couple of questions for staff. There seems to be there seems to be a sense that I'm picking up that if we update the environmental assessment for the Wellington Street extension, that that somehow creates a bias towards the Wellington Street extension. Is that in fact the case? Uh, Mayor Patterson, in response to that question, uh, no, we don't believe that that would create a bias towards the Wellington Street extension. Uh, the report tries to be clear in indicating that as we step through uh, the process of updating the environmental assessment, that that would bring uh, all reasonable transportation alternatives um, through an evaluation process. Uh, so it wouldn't necessarily uh, apply a level of favoritism to the Wellington Street extension. So if there's some concern with the fact that the that we're calling it an update to the Wellington Street extension, is there some way to reframe it as an environmental assessment for transportation solutions for the Inner Harbor or some other wording that does not send the message that I think some people are concerned about that there is that bias? Again, Mayor Patterson, in fact, the, the report uh, suggests that the first step in undertaking the update to the EA would in fact be to change the title and to use that as a means by which we could convey to the public that there is no bias with the Wellington Street extension, that there would be uh, an equal playing field in terms of evaluating all the different potential transportation solutions. So I'm going to ask that Council reflect on the answer that we just got from staff. The first thing that staff is going to do, it's change the whole name and remove the idea that this is an EA for the Wellington Street Extension. We're going to call it a new EA for a transportation study. So we're actually, by putting off the update to the Wellington Street Extension, we're actually preserving the Wellington Street Extension. If you're opposed to the Wellington Street Extension, you should be voting against this amendment and voting for the motion as was presented to staff because that's the quickest way to restart the process and be thinking in a holistic manner where we can completely reimagine what the transportation system would look like. That makes sense not only from a planning perspective, but it makes sense from a financial perspective. Staff have made it clear that if we package both of these things together, we're going to save a lot of money. We could save fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. That's good financial planning, especially when it not only saves us money, but it actually leads to a better outcome in the end. So I'm going to ask council to vote against this amendment. When we get to the motion as not amended, I will happily support, or I will put forward myself, a motion to write in. If we want, write in the recommendation. Just delete. Wellington Street Extension and just put that wording that uh, Mr. Van Buren has recognized and then that way we can put the two things together and actually move forward, save money, have a holistic view, get the whole public input that we need to be able to move forward on this project. That's a far better way to move forward. So I would really encourage Council to vote against this amendment and let's follow that other path instead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I have the chair? And I return the chair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next on my list is Councillor Ellen. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I, just to start off, I have a couple questions, um, not surprisingly, about the EA. Um, it's uh, been something of a, uh, a lot of discussion about what the purpose of an EA is. Uh, and, and if you could just, if staff could just quickly clarify for us how an EA is used um, and for what kinds of projects it's used for in, in the city. That would be um, a, a good, just put us on a level playing field in the room for the debate tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, through you, Mayor Patterson, uh, a municipal class environmental assessment is, um, 
is a process that is used to evaluate um, municipal infrastructure projects, uh, transportation projects being one of those. Um, it is a, uh, a systematic uh, approach that allows the proponent, in this case it's the municipality, uh, to define a problem statement and then to look at a range of different solutions uh, to that particular problem statement. Then there is the, um, the exercise of going through and creating uh, an approach to evaluate each of those potential alternatives uh, in a way in which you can then arrive at what the preferred solution would be. And then uh, that is finally accompanied by then looking at what are the means by which we would have to mitigate for any adverse environmental impacts that would be caused by that preferred uh, solution. And then the final step is to move that project through to its implementation, which of course would ultimately be design and construction. Great, thank you. And just to um, add to that, so if um, in the case of this specific EA, um, the problem statement is about um, capacity for traffic during peak hours uh, in the city. Is that, is that uh, the case with this? I see Mayor Patterson, yes, that's correct. The, uh, the problem statement is a defined uh, lack of transportation capacity uh, for traffic moving in a north-south direction through this particular region of the city. And so if a, um, uh, if we were, re as suggested in the report, when we reassess traffic models uh, to include sort of the increasing uh, the congestion level as recommended in our uh, transportation master plan that hasn't been uh, approved yet, but it's recommended, um, and we, we assess all different alternatives, we come to um, the fact that that problem statement is, is no longer um, as severe or as um, necessary, uh, it does what, what happens to the um, considerations in that environmental assessment? Would, like, would that would you undertake that problem statement first, or would you assume that that problem statement still exists when you do an update to uh, an EA? Uh, to you, Mayor Preston, we would start from the premise that the, the problem statement is still that there is a uh, transportation deficiency uh, in that particular area of the city in the north-south direction. Um, but that, as you have indicated, and it's actually defined in the proposed scope of work for the EA update, uh, would be to go through a process of, yet again, uh, validating the needs justification. And the proposal in this case would look at uh, a more detailed traffic simulation of that confined geographical area to confirm if, in fact, there is that needs justification. And are you aware of um, any sort of environmental assessment uh, process um, municipal class uh, that uh, has not recommended the, the project as um, outlined or envisioned by the, um, by the body that's requested it? Again, through you, Mayor Patterson, in my experience, um, the, the recommendations and the preferred solution that end up uh, being mapped out through the environmental assessment process have typically been uh, the final endorsed. Um, but I can't say that categorically and recognizing the fact that these types of environmental assessments are carried out in every municipality across the province. Thank you, I can, and I can appreciate that your experience is not all-knowing and, uh, and is subjective, but I just wanted to get a sense of that. Um, uh, just moving to, uh, and this has to do with uh, whether this amendment goes forward or not, um, uh, you, 
Commissioner Hurdle had mentioned that we could look at this from a sequential standpoint. So if we uh, approach this, and this may shift the line of questioning uh, over to the secondary planning uh, side of things, but um, when we go to the secondary plan stage, one of the uh, concerns that we've heard from the public, uh, especially approaching this, even if we remove the words Wellington Street Extension, as the mayor has uh, thoughtfully suggested, um, it, it's still the worry is that if we move both of these processes forward, that the that the that road or that uh, transportation solution or, um, would still lie at the heart of that. Would we be able to? And, and it, you, it, this was indicated in the report, but um, if the EA is still part of the process, would we have to consider it in the secondary planning process and to what extent? Second. Thank you, Madam per Mayor Perhatchson. So yes, we have to consider the Wellington Street extension as part of the secondary planning process because it currently exists in public policy. So it's, it's firmly, um, within our official plan, it has been for a long time, and the existing policies of the official plan are the first founda foundational pieces of doing a secondary plan assessment. Does that mean that they remain that way in perpetuity? No, so if going through the secondary planning process, we determine some different transportation alternatives that for whatever reason in 2006 weren't considered, and those things are looked at because we've had a shift in priorities or values as a community that's not going to necessarily come up with some type of predetermined outcome. That's not what the secondary planning tool is meant to do. It's, uh, it starts with a, an envisioning exercise, a priority setting exercise, and then you're looking at really creating a functional land use plan with the implementing policies to make that happen. So it's not a foregone conclusion, but yes, absolutely, through the process, whether or not the amendment is passed the way it is, the secondary plan has to address the Wellington Street extension. It has to look at that, the way that it exists now in public policy, and then it has to retest that to see if it's still valid or if there are other alternatives that need to be looked at that are arrived at through the process of public consultation, consultation with council, certainly, and then creatively arrived at with the project consulting team, that's what gets looked at. Okay, and through you, Your Worship, one last question. So the, um, uh, should the secondary planning process identify uh, these alternatives that, um, that may exist, um, would then, uh, how would that then be integrated into the EA study um, that you, are, is meant to go along with this, uh, sort of as envisioned. We, how does that, since we have to consider it either way, um, how would how would we then uh, integrate it? Because generally, um, the the conception and the the sort of sense that we get about EAs is that they tend to recommend projects as envisioned or or, or planned because that's part of the planning process. And what we want to say is, how do we uh, pull back on one plan and, and insert another plan in, a, in an EA process, uh, is that, is it, and is that intended as a possibility? Uh, who wants <laughs> to answer that? Ms. Agnew. Sure. So to answer your question, um, I think what staff was recommending in that we have a, a, a process where we're achieving synergy. So that wouldn't mean that we would be recommending that the secondary plan and the EA process start at exactly the same time and they just go through the process. What we would actually suggest is similar to the process that we followed for the comprehensive zoning and the official plan update. So the official plan, again, that's your high level foundational policy as it relates to land use planning. So for the five-year OP, we started that piece where we're doing the consultation with council and with the community to look at what the key issues are. And we wanted to get those discussions got underway and get some key um, assumptions identified and agreement on some key principles that we we're trying to pursue through this process prior to get the zoning, because the zoning implements the official plan. 
in a similar fashion, not identical, but similar, we're suggesting a process with a secondary plan where we would start that foundational work, we'd start those conversations, we'd develop those priorities, and through the process of doing that with some of the, the background work, work, which would include transportation planning, that would look at a variety of alternatives. And the thing I think to, to keep in, in mind as well is that the terms of reference for what will become the project, whether it's a standalone project, um, each individual, or whether it's a combined project, is that's in the care and control of council if you want to see the terms of reference. So what I would suggest is allowing staff to have the time to develop the terms of reference and the scope of work, which we couldn't do in the time frame to get it to this council meeting, but to give us the opportunity to develop that along with a work plan that shows the two processes, where they fit in together, how one will start and the other one will come along and have that come back for your consideration so you can see how the process will roll out and to see the critical inputs that go into that process. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, next on my list is Councillor Osanek. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, those were good questions and the answers that we received. I still think I support the amendment that's before us to keep the secondary plan separate um, at this point, um, just because of um, my confidence that alternative solutions um, will get um, a fair, you know, fair attention. What we heard with um, the public and the consultations that we had is that with the 2005-2006 environmental assessment of the Wellington Street extension, that it was just a very small analysis done of the alternatives, and that's probably where the rumor that there was bias um, came from. And uh, that doesn't give me a good confidence level that um, an alternative solution could still be given, you know, proper attention to the Wellington Street extension. So I have more confidence if we do the secondary plan, then we'll see the secondary plan results, and then we can allocate the money that we know is available for the EA at that time, just when we get a better handle on the secondary plan. And uh, so I think that's how I'll be voting at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody that has not spoken to the motion to amend that wishes to speak? Councilor McLaren has the right to speak last. Uh, okay. Um, you're right. Councilor Shell, you haven't spoken to the motion to amend, so you can speak. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. This has been a very difficult process. I, I, it resonated when Councilor Stroud said it's political. Um, we are receiving very... Uh, I think quite clear answers um, from staff, um, but it's as though there's the political overtone of the Wellington Street extension, as, as Councillor Osanek just talked about, perception. And I, I will vote uh, for the amendment, um, partly because we can ask for the Wellington Street extension environmental assessment at a later date, it could be in two weeks when staff talks to us. If we take it out now, it doesn't preclude our understanding that we can put it back in. But it just isn't clear enough yet um, that we will not somehow be pulling the Wellington Street extension into this too fully when that has become the issue that we're trying to solve for the public and it's still a bit confusing. So I think if we can separate the two, as I say, in, in two, two weeks or a month, it wouldn't need great reconsideration. We could, it could be an add-on. So I will support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Next on my list is Councillor Hutchison. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just some questions to staff. Um, we're talking about a uh, environmental assessment update, and that prompts for me what is it that we're retaining as versus what is it that we're changing and as versus having a whole new EA? Um, and that's my question. I think there's confusion or murkiness, let's say, around why it's like even, no offense to anyone, but it's, it's murky in the report, okay? why it's an EA update we're choosing to do 
And so I would like some clarification on one, why is it an EA update? And secondly, what we're, if it's only an update, what are we retaining as versus what we're gonna be open for change? Mr. Van Buren. Uh, through you, Mayor Patterson, the, the scope of work for the update can be, um, can be driven by the proponent, in this case, the municipality. We can decide what the scope of work is for, for the update. Um, what we attempted to reflect in the report this evening uh, before you tonight is the fact that that scope of work is actually quite comprehensive. It probably is closer to the side of actually looking more like the restart of, of an EA. Um, we contend again that if you, if you go through the process of an update to the EA, uh, you still have the ability to bring forward some of that information that may still have some validity that was collected um, back in 2005, 2006. Um, the other advantage is that you don't have the potential uncertainty of having an approved EA in the Wellington Street extension uh, that is sitting there while you are now undertaking a new process through a new EA uh, for, for an alternative. So the, I guess the, the, the long and short of all of this is that the scope of work that we've defined here is very much looking like it would, it would entail all of the elements of what you would undertake through a new or separate EA. So, in the grand Canadian tradition, an update, but not necessarily an update, right? So, maybe something new. So, um, my other question is, um, if one, just hypothetically, if one favors removing the Wellington Street extension, what does the current EA, the one existing now, need to be replaced by another EA? I know we're proposing to go through that, but does that have to be the case? Mr. Van Buren. If, if I understand the, the question correctly, um, if we go through an update to the environmental assessment, um, we would we would be re-looking at all of the different alternatives that that may uh, that may point to another preferred solution other than the Wellington Street extension. I hope I'm answering your question. My understanding from the report is that you have we have environmentalists. Um, an EA for the W for the Wellington Street extension now, and that it cannot, in effect, it, we can ch we can change it, but we have to meet certain criteria, and we can let it lapse, but it doesn't really ever once it's in once it's been done as it has been now it doesn't ever lapse, it sits there until we actually do change it, so. Some kind of EA is necessary, whatever side of the equation you're on in terms of uh, wanting the road or not wanting the road, it, it, insofar as we're in that position of making that decision now. Is that, is that clear enough? Uh, through Mayor Patterson, I, I believe so. And, it's, and a, they, it's a page uh, 197 or something. So in response to your question, um, <clears throat> if there was an other uh, alternative solution that was preferred and recommended, um, that would somehow need to bring closure to the current Wellington Street extension, which is currently the, the approved um, and preferred solution. Um, no, that's exactly what doesn't happen. The, uh, the, I guess here, I'll, I'll try it a different way. The, um, 
Is there another, is there another mechanism, planning mechanism, by which the uh, Wellington Street extension could be removed that does not involve an EA? Ms. Second. The secondary planning process. So if we do the secondary plan process, which is proposed here, does that mean we do not need the EA update? Uh, the, the EA update, um, again, there are two tools. One's under the Planning Act. The other one is under uh, the Environmental Assessment Act, and they're meant to do two different things. So the, the secondary plan um, looks at the Wellington Street ex um, extension from a policy perspective. And as part of the secondary planning, again, we would be looking at providing a functional transportation network to service the entire area. So if that came out with a recommendation for some type of traffic movement in a north-south way that wasn't the Wellington Street extension, that would give us the grounds to do some policy changes. But in terms of looking at what we could actually build as a functional road, there's still the EA process that has to be undertaken. Okay, so, okay, so that would be the problem. And then we'd have to solve this north-south deficiency. And um, we would need, would we need but we still already have the WSE on the books. So do we need an EA to remove it? An EA that says something else? Mr. Van Buren. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, sorry, Councillor, I was struggling with your question, but I, I think I understand it. The answer is yes. If you're going to have an alternative to the Wellington Street extension, the process to do that would be through an environmental assessment. In addition to the secondary plan, in this case, at least, right? Correct. And then, again, the, the secondary plan is going to be assistive in that process because the secondary plan is going to allow for information to feed into that environmental assessment. As I mentioned earlier, one of the key steps in an environmental assessment is to, is to build some evaluation criteria to help you measure and assess all of the different alternatives that you're going to evaluate. That secondary planning process will, will give you some guidance to say, okay, these criteria, uh, whether or not they are social criteria, they're cultural criteria, they're physical environment criteria, they're economic criteria, that information can all be drawn from the secondary planning process that then is used to inform your environmental assessment. Right. So the, the question before us right now is whether we're going to amend the current motion um, the, to address um, issues of clarification, apprehension about what's involved in the way in which the secondary plan and the EA, uh, the, it's difficult to call it anything, the new EA or the EA update, one or the other, uh, how they, how they um, fit together. And I think that's where the report doesn't really explain itself. And I think that's where some of this apprehension is coming from. And you've indicated, if I understand uh, Mr. Van Buren correctly, that, um, that we would, that, we may be retaining or bringing along information from the 2060A to a rather limited extent. Is that fair? Or maybe you feel you don't know that yet. I don't know. Because that's partly what it is. People feel if the inputs are the same, you'll get the same outputs. And you'll get the same recommendation. And so it all depends on what assumptions and what inputs from the last EA in 2006, you bring forward. And that's where the murkiness goes. People can't look at it and say, not sure where this is going. 
So, Councillor Hutchison, just to let you know, you have 15 seconds on the clock. I've been stopping it every time you've been asked to, asking a question, but I just wanted to yeah, give you that feedback. Yeah, that's, that's fair. If I could just get an okay. answer to Mr. that. Mr. Van Buren. There would be an opportunity to bring forward only information out of the existing EA that could be assistive in terms of the update to the environmental assessment. Uh, the notion of, of that information in, in some way, shape or form presenting a bias to the outcome of an update to an EA, uh, I think is, is misplaced. As, as we mentioned earlier, um, one of the critical things here is that if you go through the process of advancing the work on the secondary plan, what that is going to offer is an opportunity to have a, a future vision state for what that whole inner harbor and an industrial area is going to, to look like. That is going to be a great opportunity then to help to uh, set some evaluation criteria to measure all the different transportation options that may exist. Again, recognizing that this is a proponent driven process. So the municipality, um, Council, uh, technical advisory committee, a public advisory committee can all be part of developing what those evaluation criteria are. Furthermore, they can be involved in actually setting the weighting for those evaluation criteria. So then when it comes to actually scoring um, all the different options, it's, it's, quite, it's quite valid and, and realistic that there could be um, an, an alternate solution that is selected in place of the Wellington Street extension. Thank you. I think just before Go. you, Commissioner Beach. I just wanted to clarify on the point as well. In terms of the municipality spending capital money on transportation infrastructure, it requires that that solution is consistent with our official plan policies, and it also requires that it has an EA process in terms of investing any capital. So if it were a solution that did not involve the Wellington Street Road at all and included only changes that would improve pedestrian cycling and transit on existing roads, but we needed to invest in traffic signalization or other transportation components, we need the secondary plan that amends the official plan and we also need the EA to be updated to include that option so that we can invest in that transportation system. Ms. Agnew. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in terms of looking at the critical inputs that would go into the process, and I think there's been some questions raised um, about how we would arrive at a different income outcome if the critical inputs are the same. So from a regulatory perspective, the policy regime that exists now is stronger than it's ever been in the province of Ontario. So since the, under, the undertaking of the EA for the Wellington Street extension, there's been changes in the provincial policy statement, there's been changes in the Planning Act, and uh, most importantly, there's been changes in the official plan. So we now have a strengthened policy lens that any type of assessment to do with Wellington Street or any other type of road corridor that we would look at is now going to be tested in a much more rigorous way based on environmental social criteria that exist in policy provincial and local policy in a stronger way than it ever has. So the policy test associated with looking at those criteria will fundamentally be different um, because the policy regime is different now. So, Councillor Hutchison, you have 15 seconds left on the clock. Do you want to use them? I just want to say that I'll vote for the amendment, but I hope this comes back in a hurry so it can be dovetailed with the secondary plan. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bilm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. So, I do understand the reason for the amendment. I, I understand what I, I believe the intent of it is. I also believe, though, that I think a lot of this is stemming from the fact that Wellington Street extension is said right in the motion, and, and essentially, I think that's where people are sensing an undertone or that a bias may exist. I don't think that's the case, and based on what I'm hearing here, I'm going to echo the mayor's words that I think having the two of these happen at the same time uh, creates synergies, it creates cost savings, and it has all the information feed in at the same time to allow the secondary plan to have an EA, which basically provides all the necessary information when we need it. So 
rather than kind of deciding one thing and then coming back two weeks from now and having this whole discussion again, uh, and based on that, I won't be supporting the amendment, although I understand the reasons for it. And based on what I'm hearing from staff, it sounds like regardless of what happens, what we decide, we're gonna have an EA. So why not have them done at the same time, have them feed into each other and have that actually provide a logical secondary plan that has had an EA done, which feeds into it, rather than doing this again in two weeks and then going, oh, well, we're gonna have an EA anyway. So based on that reasoning and the reasoning that we're gonna have an EA, we're gonna have a secondary plan, I'll be, uh, I will not be supporting the amendment. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Candon. Thank you, uh, through your worship. Um, I want to thank everyone for speaking on this because it gave me some time to think about uh, the amendment. Um, I'm not going to be supporting it because I believe, as uh, Mr. Bohm had, uh, had mentioned, um, whether they happen at the same time or at separate times, if it's going to be biased or unbiased, they have to happen regardless. I don't see the time frames changing any result. Um, Mr. Van Buren has stated very clearly it's going to be an un unbiased report. We've all we've all heard that, so I don't see the timing as being very influential. The reason I'll be voting it down is because it's going to increase our costs and slow down the process. Uh, if 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 we get the information in a timely fashion and a fiscally responsible fashion, it'll just allow us to start that conversation quicker. Um, and I also don't necessarily feel that the wording in the amendment uh, changes, changes things in a positive way. So for example, if you look at exceptional, forward thinking, or innovative, those are very subjective words, and I don't necessarily feel that they're necessary. It almost suggests we were asking for a poor quality, backward thinking, obsolete secondary plan, which we weren't. I just don't see that those words are necessary because we're always, every time we ask somebody to do something, we accept it, we expect it to be exceptional. And if it isn't, then we can, then we can comment on that. But I think that, uh, I, do, I just don't see that those add much value to the amendment. So for that reason, I will not be supporting this amendment. Thank you. There's only one member of council that has not spoken. And uh, if she chooses, would you like to speak? Councilor Turner. Okay, I'll let, thank you. Through you, your worship, I will add my last two cents and I'll make it really quick. It's been a long night so far. Um, I'm going to vote against this motion as I think it's a delay and I think it's gonna slow everything down and cost us more time and I think it's better that we get it done tonight, get it over with and get this moving forward. And that's all I'm gonna say because we've taken up a lot of time, thank you. Thank you, so Councilor McLaren. As the mover of the motion, you may speak last. Thank you. It was uh, said that I may have, when I said that it was biased, I'm sorry, I chose the wrong word, but what has become clear between the time that I said that and the response to staff, it is clear that there is still an influence, there is still some feed in, some influence or some dovetailing. And in that is where the problem is. We have a preferred solution right now, which is the Wellington Street Extension. We would like a different preferred solution because as staff has said, in their experience, the preferred solution has always been approved. Therefore, we would like a small pause, a break in between. We know we need to do an EA eventually. We want to have those adjectives there for the purpose of expressing new ways of thinking. The synergies that are being lost are gonna be gained in the immense savings that we can get. We're talking here a $35 million project, some of that through development charges, some of that through taxes in the uh, capital budget. If we spend an extra $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000 to save millions, I think that's a very good investment and in thinking further ahead. It is clear that we have given certain amounts of direction, but this is gonna give more direction in the direction that we want, which is a new solution, a new and different solution. The problem still exists. This was the words of staff. The problem being the traffic problem. This is being carried over, but we are in the process of adjusting or going through the traffic demand management plans, or sorry, traffic demand master plan. One of the things that we will be, that is being recommended there is the change of the level of service indicator. When you change the level of service indicator, we change all the parameters that are going into this particular study. If we do this now, we start with old data. What we want is new data. 
For that reason, we need this pause at least until the um, transportation master plan is approved with uh, the proper direction there. Um, So for those nine reasons, I would encourage you guys to actually vote in favor of this. It is actually for the betterment of Kingston, and I hope that you will see that from a long-term perspective as well as a short-term perspective. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, we will call the vote on the motion to amend. And the motion to amend carries by a vote of seven to six. So on the motion as amended, uh, Councillor Stroud, Councillor Shell, Councillor McLaren have spoken. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor Neal. Thank you. Um, I am much more comfortable with this direction uh, as amended. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having an opportunity for both the transportation master plan to have to be completed in the process uh, to inform uh, future decisions and also I'm looking forward to the secondary plan doing likewise. I do have a minor amendment and I will say that I did share it with uh, uh, our acting CAO prior to, to the meeting and the uh, clerk has that. It was moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Osanic. And it basically just says that Clause 3 of Report 44 of the Chief Administrative Officer recommend be amended as follows. That Council direct staff to report back to Council on the terms and criteria of any RFP prior to the issuance of that RFP. So if I... So there's... So the motion to amend has been put forward by Councillor Neal. It's seconded by Councillor Osanic. So Councillor Neal, you can speak to it. Thank you very much. Very quickly, um, sometimes this happens with RFPs and sometimes it doesn't. And, um, and so uh, the acting CAO said she didn't have issues with this coming forward, that, that um, she had a comfort level with it, this as a recommendation. And so all this is asking is that council be given an opportunity to, to look at the criteria and the, the uh, requirements of the RFP before it, it gets issued. This is not, I can assure you, an attempt to micromanage the RFP process. I don't wanna go there. Uh, but all that I, I'm looking for is that we have an opportunity to, to see what criteria is going forward when the RFP is, is, uh, is being issued. Uh, so I hope that this will get approved. Thank you. So this is only on the motion to amend. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, through you, just wanted to comment that um, I, I was going to write that, uh, uh, and as um, our Director of Planning had mentioned it in her comments, and uh, I thought it would be important, as this is such an important issue to our community, that we get as much of it out transparently as possible. So thank you for bringing that, this amendment forward. I think it, it's a, a good addition to the motion. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Seeing none, we'll call the question. Oops. Please vote. And that carries by a vote of 11 to 1. On the motion now as amended, I just have one question for staff. It might be difficult to provide an answer at the moment, but Given that the initial um, recommendation was looking about a two-year timeline to get this whole process completed, just curious if staff could comment on perhaps the approximate timeline we might be looking at at this point. So the question is, do we have any 
estimate of what the potential timelines could look like now for getting through the secondary planning and the EA process? Is it, is it a large range now? Is it anything from two years to four years? Is there some way to kind of narrow that down for us? Sure. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So through you, the, the timelines that we suggested, the two years would really be, you know, sort of a year and a half of a secondary planning exercise with a, a pretty robust program for a public consultation. And that would also involve coming through planning committee back to council if council had some thoughts before we got to a place where we'd be looking at having a comfort level with uh, some recommendations in and around the secondary plan. We had uh, envisioned the EA process happening around the same time frame, not starting at the same time as the secondary plan, but now if we're looking at them being separate, it would, I guess, depend on whether or not council's level of comfort about when the EA would start coincides with when the secondary plan would finish. And if it did, you'd be adding a year process or two um, onto um, the secondary planning timeline. Commissioner Hurdle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to add that the time frame that we provided to Council for the secondary plan is actually a pretty aggressive uh, time frame. Uh, to our knowledge, any other secondary plans that have been completed have taken a lot longer than a year and a half. So this is already pretty aggressive and could take longer than a year and a half. So depending on the amount of public consultation, because we understand this will have impacts on a lot of, of individuals in our community and a lot of people will want to be part of this process of course so it could very well be longer than a year and a half in terms of the secondary plan thank you so i'm going to vote for the motion as amended but uh, i will just make the comment that i think it's important that this council make the decision and we are running the risk that we will be punting it to the next council so i'm going to throw that out there uh, but with that, I will, uh, I will end my comments. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Oh, Councillor, Councillor Ellen, so on the motion as amended. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I may ask another question or two. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask, in terms of this, uh, was there any intent for it to work with our official plan update um, uh, as a, should there be a, a, an alternative to the Wellington Street extension decided upon, um, was there intent on, on those results going into the, the final approval of the official plan update as part of the synergy we were trying to reach here? Or would we have to amend the official plan regardless of the, of the results because we would be through that process? Ms. Agnew? Through your worship, so there was not the intention to have that integrated with the five-year OP. The scope of work for that, as it is an update, it's not a complete uh, complete delete and replace exercise. It has a pretty defined scope, and uh, in terms of the um, the complexity of the process associated with the secondary plan and the extensiveness of the policy amendments that would result to the official plan, we would recommend it being done as a standalone process. Okay, thank you. That's that's great. That um, I just know that a few of the things that we've got coming across our table are informing the update, and I just wanted to check in on that. I um, yeah, I, I'll I'll vote for this. Uh, uh, I'm uh, happy to see us uh, looking uh, at an open and transparent way of uh, finding new and innovative ways to uh, build up our city. I think it's really important uh, that. The results of this secondary plan. I think actually the secondary planning exercise is one of the best things to emerge out of this discussion because I think uh, we really need to spend some time looking at those areas and uh, this is going to be a, a great way uh, to do that. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to moving forward with the secondary plan for uh, the industrial air, the old industrial area and the inner harbor. So I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councilor George. Just quickly, uh, through your worship, one question I had earlier on was what potential secondary plans are we not going to be moving forward with now because we're reallocating these funds to this? Ms. Agnew. 
through your worship. So we did have, over the next couple of years, a few secondary plans that were identified for the budget that's been allocated. One was the old industrial area, so that will be accomplished through this process. But what we won't be able to get to would be the secondary planning for the Alcan lands and the Clogs Road, and also looking at the Sydenham and the 401 area. Thank you. Um, and I think just one other question I may ask through you, your worship to the CAO. Um, given what I have witnessed here this evening and the questions that have been asked, the decisions that have been made, it would seem to me that there's a lot of skill set that sits at the horseshoe that some may feel exceeds that of our senior staff. And I'm just wondering at what point in time will senior staff consider buyout packages so that we as a council can actually run the show and uh, make the decisions because we're actually altering the decisions of the people we put in place who have the background, the knowledge, and the understanding of how these processes work, and we're actually challenging them and changing the direction. So, not so intended I'm, to be a pun, but as gonna, mentioned earlier, I don't think we want to get into the kitchen, and we've been risking doing that. And I, I just hate the fact that we have experienced individuals working on our behalf, and we challenge their decisions and their direction that they offer us. So I think I'll take your comment. I'll take that question as a rhetorical question that Steph doesn't need to answer, but we'll leave the comment as is. So anybody else that wishes to speak? We will call the vote on the motion as amended. Please vote. And that carries by a vote of 12 to 1. On to report number 45 from the Planning Committee. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I would like to present uh, planning report number 45 and ask that it be received and adopted. Thank you. So it's moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor George, that report number 45 from the Planning Committee be received and adopted. So there are four clauses. Would anybody like any of the clauses separated? Councillor Osanek. Clause one, please. Clause one has been separated. So first we'll call the vote then on clauses two, three, and four. Clause two is an application for zoning bylaw amendment 432 Union Street. Clause three, an application for zoning bylaw amendment 1122 John Counter Boulevard. And Clause 4, Estate Residential Review, Final Report. So we'll call the vote. And that carries. Clause 1, Employment Land Strategy Review, Final Report. Councillor Osanek. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the Employment Land Strategy Report, it was a good report. Um, I just want to make one amendment to it. And um, the amendment is moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McLaren. And we were talking about the order of things with um, what we just discussed. So for this one, it would be that the secondary plans for the old industrial area and the Elkan industrial area be prioritized before the secondary plan for the Clogs Road property. Okay, so the motion to amend has been moved by Councillor Sanic, seconded by Councillor McLaren. So, Councillor Sanic, you can speak to it if you wish. Great. Um, if anyone drives along Gardner's Road north of Princess Street right now, you'll see lots of business parks being developed. That's perfect. They're in the planning process. We have an application on Thursday night at Planning Committee for another one. They're coming on stream. That's excellent. But we also have these infill areas. So we just decided that we're do going ahead with the secondary plan for the old industrial area. There's also the Al Alcan industrial area. area, And yes, it's got brownfields in there. It has issues. It's complicated. But um, I don't want, in my opinion, us to do all this you know, business park sprawl along, along Gardner's Road, um, you know, north of Creekford Road, without also addressing these core areas that can really help with our infill if we finally get 
going on the secondary plans and start developing these areas. That's where the services are. Um, Clogs Road is just north of Creekford Road and um, services are around there, but we would still, it would cost money to put the services um, further in there. And uh, we also just purchased it last year, whereas these two industrial areas have been on the books for a long time. And so um, in the, um, the report that we got, it talked about doing Clogs Road in the short term, you know, jumping on that secondary plan. If you have the report in front of you, I think it was um, recommendation number six, and it talked about short term, short term, and that just scared me too much. So that's why I'm moving this amendment, just to prioritize first the old industrial area, like we just did, followed by Alcan, and then the Clogs Road property. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Your Worship. And through you, um, I just wanted to share that I, um, I support this amendment in, in the sense that um, with the uh, new proposed uh, location for the local um, high school that's uh, to be built, um, there's some real opportunities for synergy on the Alcam property and um, to work with the school board and to work from a planning perspective to really develop and create a nice hub there for students uh, that's walkable for many people that sort of fits our vision of the city that we've set up and I think it's something that as a council we should think about moving forward um, as I was a little disheartened to hear that some of the um, money that we had set aside for that uh, secondary plan is, uh, is going to be consumed with an important secondary plan, don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, I wanted to say that I, I support this because I think there are some things coming online in that area that re represent significant economic development opportunities for us, and we should be encouraging those investments. So thank you for making this amendment. Thank you. Just a question for staff. Does this, uh, does this amendment have any impact on uh, how staff had uh, planned to prioritize uh, secondary plans? Are we shifting anything by uh, passing this amendment? A second? Through you, Your Worship. So we, we were looking at, um, as the recommendation states in the report, looking at doing the Clogs Road area um, as a shorter term objective um, with the, the recommended uh, amendment was shifting that, I mean, that will have an impact on our, our work plan, but um, we will adjust accordingly. Is there, is there a rationale why staff had looked at trying to do the secondary plan for Clogs Road um, more uh, bumping that up vis-a-vis -vis some of the other potential properties? Uh, Commissioner Beach. In terms of the priority of doing that work first, uh, the secondary plan looks at all the infrastructure improvements that might be required, and so we're looking at a, not having those lands serviced for minimum of five years. So the Clogs Road is viewed to be a priority because that is where the demand is. That's a very close um, proximity to the 401. Um, we know from the experience with the employment lands that there is, we do want to offer a wide variety of different lands that are available, but in terms of having enough service land that's available, we see that the Clogs Road could, could come up and there could be a demand for that, so we want to do the preliminary work around that. Commissioner Hurdle, did you have something that you wanted to say? So... Deputy Mayor Holland, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. So I guess my concern on what I've just heard is that there could be, there could be larger implications to this amendment. I mean, I think on the surface it looks good, uh, but I think here at, uh, here at the council table, I think we have to be very cautious about the unintended consequences that we could be creating. Uh, the Alcan lands are great, but if the demand is going elsewhere, we need to be sensitive to that demand, and we could end up in a position where we could be closing ourselves off. So based on what I've just heard, um, I'm concerned about voting for this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, and I return the chair. Uh, Commissioner Beach. 
Just some added pieces of information of why the Clogs Road is prioritized higher. Um, so the property that is involved with that secondary plan is city owned. So council will be receiving a report the next month in terms of part of the challenge with having available employment land is that there hasn't been necessarily developers that want to invest in the servicing. So the city has taken on an active role in servicing that land. So the lands that are in the Clogs Road area, they are along Gardner's Road. They also include right over to Centennial Drive and you do have approved an extension to Centennial Drive to um, also take place. So we are actually in control of most of those lands, not all of them, but that is the other component that um, in terms of having available service lands and in our, in our ability to sell to potential expansion or retention or other projects, we think that that's a better fit and it is within the serviced area um, fill-in between the water water tower and where the existing transportation structures are. Thank you. Next on my list is uh, Councillor McLaren. Thank you. Uh, when I saw this motion come by, I um, checked with KEDCO staff on this, and the response was that we probably will not be needing that land for at least 10 years and that we have an adequate supply until then at least. That's the response from KEDCO. Next on my list is Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Uh, just, oh, sorry. Maybe just, just before yeah, we do that, sure. I do have a couple of other staff sure. hands that I'm, I'm just going to get input from staff first. Um, Commissioner Beach. So just to clarify, um, to some respects, I would agree with the comments from KEDCO because in terms of doing a secondary plan, it's not land that's going to be available immediately. And when we've looked out into the future, the Clogs Road would actually be when we need the land in five to 10 years from now, we want to be ready to be able to service those lands. So this secondary planning process takes quite a bit of time to go through. We don't want to be in a situation where if we have increased demand that we have no land to offer. Okay, Councillor Bohm, I'm sorry for interrupting. You have uh, five minutes. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, I definitely am concerned about this as well, and I think it kind of goes with an earlier comment about maybe being in the kitchen. And I think with this is this is being future ready, and this is something where staff has looked at what, they, what they're going to need, what's going to be available, and they've prioritized that within their expertise. So my concern with this is sometimes we're getting, instead of being the higher level, we're getting too deep into it and we're starting to make decisions. And what's happening is we're having the discussion that we should be having with staff here instead of kind of through email or through consultation. And my concern with that is that a lot of these things could probably not be dealt with here and could be dealt with outside of the council chambers if the questions were asked to staff um, through the proper channels. So I will not be supporting this and those are my, those are my reasons for that. Thank you. Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to prolong the debate too much, so I'll keep my comments brief. I appreciate uh, that uh, things come to us in a, in a, in a, for a reason from staff, and I, and I appreciate that we need to respect their judgment. This is, this is a, uh, as Your Worship said, this is something that could have consequences down the road, but, uh, but I believe that we're being a little uh, erring on the side of caution in this one. We, there is plenty of land available and uh, changing the priorities, giving direction when it comes to priorities is high level direction. And I believe that this is the correct place to do it. Although I understand the, the reasoning behind Councillor Bowman's comments. I certainly uh, have no problem supporting this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shell. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Um, I do have a problem supporting this one. What we've just been through has had to do with something that's been on the books for a long time that has created huge public discourse. Um, this has to do with in, uh, industrial lands that we control, and I don't want to tie ha this, the hands of staff, um, so I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Councillor Candon. 
Thank you. Uh, through your worship, um, I will not be supporting uh, supporting this motion just based on the fact that uh, I think that we may be undermining or not appreciating enough uh, the people who may want to be acquiring land in the city or developing land in the city. Um, having a variety of things to offer people for sale will make our city a little bit more appealing. So restricting that, uh, I don't think will be a large benefit to us. I agree wholeheartedly that um, in a perfect world, it, it would be better to limit uh, sprawl and, and discourage that type of development. But at the same time, it's hard to uh, say no to people who may want a property that they see as being in higher demand. Um, and I just think that uh, keeping all doors open uh, is probably the best approach moving forward. Thank you, Councillor George. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, um, this land, I think it's already been stated, this has been of interest to the city for many, many years. And it's surprising to hear that, you know, Kedco doesn't think there's a need for it for about 10 years because they were very supportive of us pursuing this purchase many terms ago. And it took us a lot of years to go through that process and buy these lands after it uh, went through well, whatever it does with the province. Um, and this is something that we really wanted because we wanted to, one of the things that we talked about that was one of our strategies at the time was we wanted the 401 exposure and this gave that to us. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted this land so badly and we wanted to, to move forward and develop it. So I'm not going to support this. Um, we had a report that was provided by uh, the consulting group that went out and did, did, did all the, uh, the legwork for us. It was supported at, uh, I believe it was unanimous at planning committee, so I'm surprised now we've got two planning committee members coming back and asking that it be revised. Um, I mean, there's a lot of history to this property and, and the reasons as given by staff that it takes time to go through all the secondary planning and everything else that takes with it. To have it ready in five to seven years, we have to start the process now or we won't be ready to roll when we really need those lands. So I would urge council to uh, vote against this and uh, let's move this forward as it was initially intended. Okay, Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, We've talked for a bit about why the Clogs Road land is valuable. Um, I'm curious about, I guess I have a question for staff on um, perhaps, okay, so first of all, my concern is that not prioritizing the Alcan land would lead to not having this visioning exercise through the secondary plan, and it seems that that's required in that area. I'm curious about why the demand isn't there for that those lands, and if, if anyone could respond to that, I'd appreciate it. Ms. Sackner. Uh, through you, Your Worship. So uh, there's, there's various types of demand for employment lands. So what Commissioner Beach was speaking to is, uh, you know, the interest in the areas around the Clogs Road, um, Cataraqui Woods, they have good exposure to the 401 and they have uh, direct uh, transportation to the 401. Um, they're developing in different types of newer business parks, which is attractive to different types of business. The Alcan lands um, require some revitalization, so there's some limitations there as well that I think is driving what's happening in the market. Um, in terms of looking at this as urban sprawl, so if we really want to talk planning about what's urban sprawl, it's looking at um, expansions um, of land use planning that's away from the central urban areas. So our central urban areas, it's what's within the urban boundary. So our urban boundary defines our urban areas. And although we have the central part of the city where we are, we are finding that there's rapid development in some of the eastern and western parts of our city, which form part of the urban core. So I think we have to think about it holistically. And although there may not be an immediate need for, for that land right now, as Commissioner Beach was, was alluding to, the secondary planning process is complex. It takes time. It can be subject to appeal at the OMB, which takes even more time. And what our employment lands report is telling us is that by 2021, we're looking at some potential land shortages for different types of parcels. So that precipitated the need to start the secondary planning so that we could be in a position to look at detailed design of the infrastructure that's required to service those lands in a time frame for something to be available in the five to seven year range. Commissioner Beach. So I, 
I agree with the comments that were just made. I just want to add that part of the strategy around the employment lands is that the city has taken on the um, role of a developer in part to make sure that lands are available. The secondary plan that is being done around the Alcan lands I think is almost entirely privately owned. So in terms of how that land gets developed and how it progresses, it is entirely in the hands of the private sector. So from the city's perspective, if they decide to go ahead and they invest in the land, we market that, we promote it, we encourage those lands to also develop. The challenge will be though, if we don't go ahead with the clogs road piece, there will be different uh, purchasers that want that type of exposure to a different type of uh, land, so closer to the transportation and a very fast growing residential area as well. But those lands, the city owns and can, we can push out the servicing if the demand's not there and we don't have to pay for it if there's not a demand. But if we don't do the secondary plan, we won't have any options. It will take that amount of time to plan before we can actually service those lands. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Hutchison. Thank you, Worship. Um, thank you for the answers and the um, questions from Council. The, um, my understanding in talking to the uh, mover, going back quite a way, not just tonight, <laughs> is her concern is with the forest that's on the land and giving up that resource, that amenity. And, um, so my question to staff is, can the, I mean, obviously there's, we're trying to sell the land in a, um, in a, in an employment land situation. Is there some way in which we can accommodate the woods, the forest through the secondary plan as part of an employment land property? Mr. Hugenboss. Yeah. I get this thing on, does it? It's on. Through you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, the, uh, the, the land at the corner of Gardner's Road and Creekford Road, which is part of the Clogs Road area, uh, is in the, I don't know if I have the terminology correct, but it's in the, the secondary level of significant woodland that hasn't been put to all the tests uh, to show whether it is, it is significant or not. Uh, we are undertaking assessment uh, this spring. Uh, we did an initial assessment uh, when we purchased the property from the province. The province found no concern with the developability of the, of the site. Um, our initial due diligence showed the same. Uh, we wanna get a final conclusion uh, before the full secondary planning process uh, were to begin. Uh, and it is not contemplated that it was going to start uh, tomorrow, the secondary planning process. So this is one of the steps that would feed into it because it is uh, flagged in, in the official plan and staff has taken the steps to, to do that in, a, in an orderly fashion. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna interject on this because I think we just need to rein in the questioning just a little bit. If the, if the motion to amend was to say get rid of Clogs Road, then I think that this would totally be a fair line of questioning. But since it's just a, we're just talking about prioritizing, I think if we can just try to keep our questions and comments relative to which should come first and which should come second. So, Councillor Hutchison, you still have the floor for another four minutes. If oh, Commissioner Beach, uh, I just want to point out that the city has a very good record in terms of developing our employment lands that we do a lot of extra things to ensure that natural areas are preserved and that we've added significant green space to the city through the development of our plans and we do the studies to make sure that we preserve those areas that need to be preserved. Councillor Hutchison. Um, what I get from that is the, some important part of the woods can be, or forest can be accommodated. That's what I get from that. Thank you. Okay. So, Councillor Senate, you can speak last. If there's nobody else that wants to speak that has not already spoken. Councillor Senate. 
Thank you, Your Worship, and thanks for mentioning that this motion, this amendment, is not asking to eliminate Clogs Road property. It's just asking to prioritize it below. And trust me, I would rather us not develop it at all for the reasons that it is a contributory woodland. And in our official plan, if we can't lead by example as a city and try to give some protection to the contributory woodlands, then how can we expect all the developers in the city to try to do so as well? In the EIS that I read that came from staff, it does talk about protection below the ridge. So when the secondary plan goes through, even for the ORC lands below the ridge in the EIS I read, talked about protection was supposed to be down there. I hope that we see that in the secondary plan. And um, that's what I wanted to say. That's why it rose. Um, there was a reference to why didn't emails go back and forth. I did do an email. And the answers I got, like talked about the five to seven year window, is still didn't satisfy me for the you know edge I have, and so that's why I brought forward the motion. But I will forward that email tonight when we get home. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, we will call the question on the motion to amend. Please vote. And that loses by a vote of six to seven. So on the motion as not amended, so any further discussion? So we will call the vote. And please vote now. And that carries. Next, I will ask for uh, report number 46 from the Arts, Recreation, and Community Policies Committee. Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to present report number 46 from the Arts, Recreation, and Community Policies Committee for consideration by council. by Councillor Hutchison, seconded by Councillor Osanic, that report number 46 from the Arts, Recreation and Community Policies Committee be received and adopted. So there are four clauses. Would anyone like any of the clauses separated? Councillor Turner. I would like clause number four separated, please. So number four has been separated. So seeing no other separations, we'll first call the vote on clauses one, two, and three. Clause one is the appointment of the Public Art Working Group. Clause two is the appointment of the Kingston Arts Fund Review Working Group. And clause three is the appointment of the Visual Arts Strategy Working Group. We will call the vote. And that carries. Item four is the history of the Memorial Center. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I'd like to propose a motion to amend Clause 4. And they have my motion. So, yeah, there. Would you like me to read it? So, can I just get that on my screen as well? Great, thank you. So, yes, you can read it. Sure, okay. Let the final paragraph of Clause 4, Report 46, be amended by adding four evaluation after the words Memorial Center and by deleting in the city's cultural heritage strategy and commemoration cultural, her oops, <laughs> cultural heritage strategy as to be replaced with through the Kingston commemoration strategy when approved by council and based on available budgets or partnership grants or sponsorships as... Therefore, be it resolved that Council direct staff to consider inclusion of the history of the Memorial Center for evaluation through the Kingston commemoration strategy when approved by Council and based on available budgets or partnerships, grants, or sponsorships as sharing a history such as this would show how important the Center has been and still is 
another piece of Kingston's history would be preserved. So that's moved by Councillor Turner. It's seconded by myself. So just so everyone understands, the, the first part was the, the technical details of the motion to amend. So this is how the motion would read as amended. So Councillor Turner, you can speak to it. Yes, I feel that the motion was loosely worded and I think it needs to be cleaned up a little bit and um, information about budgets, partnerships, grants and sponsorships should be, should be included in this motion because if we don't make it tighter, then I think it's open to spend a lot of money and in a project of this kind. I also think it's a good motion and I think uh, Memorial Center is a great great place and we should preserve the memories. But we also have to be mindful in the future going forward that we that we consider other places as well, but we have to think of budgets too. We have, you know, we have to be very careful looking forward into the future that if we're going to look at the Memorial Center, we have to look at a budget if we're going to do something like this and uh, that we can't forget other places as well. So that's my thoughts. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor Hutchison. Thank you. Um, your Worship, as the chair of that committee, I can tell you that the wording for this came directly from staff. We asked them what was necessary. I would point out that saying that consider inclusion of the History Memorial Center for evaluation, that's what the word consider means in this case. Um, and the policies under which it would come was the city's cultural heritage strategy and commemorative strategy came directly from the uh, cultural services director who was present at the meeting. So, and as for the monetary aspects, that's true of any of the considerations that happen under this policy, under these policies. So I don't see how this helps. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not necessary. It's all part of what the, uh, what the uh, cultural services department is doing already. That was our information. Thank you. I think I saw someone else. It's, uh, Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so, uh, also a member of the Arts and, Recre Arts and Recreation Committee, um, it was my understanding that this motion was brought forward from the Memorial Center Advisory Committee, uh, and which explains something here. I, the fact is um, the intention of the motion is to have the Memorial Center be a part, be recognized in these new strategies that are being put forward. Um, and you know, I, I don't understand the concern of not being noted. Uh, I think actually there are some problems with this motion in, in the fact that we shouldn't be going around telling people what needs to be remembered or not. Uh, this is a, these plans encompass the entire city. I'm so, not so Deputy Mayor, I'm, yep. I, I'm just going to stop you only because um, I just want to make sure we're, we're speaking to the motion to amend at this point. And, and I'm just wondering if your comments are related to the actual guts of the motion. We m may want to save those for when we get back to the main motion. Unless there's something that you're getting at right now that speaks to this particular wording vis-a-vis -vis the other. Okay, I, you know, I appreciate that. I will speak to this motion to amend. I guess I was going back a bit because um, the I don't have a problem with the motion to amend. Um, I think this is another example of being in the kitchen, unfortunately, both the motion itself and the motion to amend. And I trust that, um, as Councillor Hutchison has mentioned, that this is already, the motion to amend includes what staff would be doing anyway. I don't necessarily have a problem with making it explicit in this form, um, so I will support the motion to amend. Thank you. On the motion to amend, Councillor Neal. Yes, I was uh, in attendance at, at the uh, Memorial Center Advisory Committee that brought this motion forward. It's a motion that uh, the current chair worked uh, collaboratively with the with the previous mayor on um, bringing this this idea forward uh, and I will say that staff uh, from the cultural department were in attendance when we presented this uh, this motion and when it was discussed at committee uh, so uh, like a couple of the previous speakers I 
I'm really not sure I see the necessity for these this amendment. Uh, it would just be clearly an improvement if if we were able to do some of that commemorative uh, recognition at this particular uh, location that we've done at all kinds of other city properties. And, and therefore, I don't see a compelling reason why we need to amend the original motion, so I won't be supporting the amendment for that reason. I too think that the these considerations will go forward with with the staff uh, input and staff have been involved throughout this process. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Beach. I just want to clarify that staff were also consulted with this amendment and in terms of the the reason for some of the changes that were made, for instance, the city's cultural heritage strategy and commemoration strategy was something that was referred to in the cultural plan. We've clarified the language in here when we were asked to provide some alternate language because the, the Kingston commemorative commemoration strategy will actually be coming forward fairly soon and we thought that because there was also another motion on the um, agenda tonight that referred to that strategy and it will be coming forward to council very soon. That is the piece that will provide that evaluation criteria for council if they approve that uh, plan. So we did, I want to clarify that we did give input on um, when asked, we provide clarification and on the amendment we did provide clarification and I did also consult with the Director of Culture as well. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, we will call the question on the motion to amend. Please vote. And that carries by a vote of 12 to 1. So on the motion as amended, so, Councillor Turner, you have the floor if there's anything else you would like to say. Okay, is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think the reason, unfortunately I wasn't at the meeting when this was brought forward at Memorial Center Advisory Committee. Um, I think the ra part of the reason, though, um, has to do with the fact that the commemoration strategy uh, isn't available yet. I look forward to seeing that. I think that there are lots of initiatives uh, that would benefit from having that strategy and, and for our approval. Um, so I think there's a, a bigger issue here which I was sort of suggesting which is that the public ha has a keen interest in a lot of commemorative activities. Um, we would like to see a lot of those move forward as a council as well. Uh, I would hope that when we see those opportunities um, that we have a very broad approach, a citywide approach that it, we're not necessarily focusing on what we have already commemorated in the past um, or that you know that we were that we have a good discussion at that time about broad policies on commemoration. Uh, so I look forward to seeing that. Thank you. So anybody else who wishes to speak? Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. Thank you. Um, so, I'm happy to support this because it's, in my read of this, it's, it's taking this and it's putting into a larger overall picture. And one of the things that's always concerned me is that we have a particular committee for the Memorial Center, but we don't have comparative committees for other uh, institutions and places uh, where we also want to tell those stories and my concern is that we could be giving voice to some things but not to others and so that's where I'm, I think it's very important that we're taking a broad overall view of the city and I think that the commemoration strategy is doing that and so if we're just incorporating this piece in there uh, I think that's fine. Um, the other piece to keep in mind and I, I think I'm going to be fairly consistent on this of course we had a big debate a number of months ago about whether we wanted committees to bring things forward or whether we wanted things to start at council. So this is an example of something that's come from a committee. And so 
as a practice, as a rule, I'm going to ask for input from the counselors that are on those committees to try to tie that into the strategic direction that we have as council. So I know that I've heard from uh, Deputy Mayor Holland, who sits on that committee. Um, but again, that's something whether Councillor Neal wants to speak to that as well. But I think it's important that as council, we're always asking those questions of each other. Does this committee work? Yes, it's valuable. It's yes, we appreciate it. But how does that tie in with the overall direction that council wants to go? So I'm just going to leave my comments at that. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I return the chair. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor Shell. Might as well, since you brought that up. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Um, I'm on the uh, Heritage uh, Property Working Group, and there actually is a member, and I've, I've let um, Councillor Neal know there is a member of that who's working on the designation, as is the whole group of the Memorial Center, um, whether the, it's just the Memorial Center, the whole ground. So there actually is another group working on this very same thing, but I have made sure that uh, Councillor Neal knows and I think that's exactly what you were talking about. It, it is preferable if it is at council so that we can make sure we know what each other is doing, but I'll leave it at that and be in support. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll call the vote on the motion as amended. And that carries. Report number 47 from the Committee of the Whole. It's moved by Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Candon. The report number 47 from the Committee of the Whole be received and adopted. So there are two clauses. The tax rate increase for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, and the strategic priorities and implementation plan. Councillor Strout. One. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I apologize. I totally missed that. That was, that was overly brief. I'm sorry, Your Worship. Uh, separate clause one, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we will uh, deal with both clauses uh, separately. So first on clause one, Councillor Strout. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just want to ask you a question, I guess, of, uh, I'm not sure which member of staff will answer this, but does this, is this uh, the normal format when we uh, set a tax rate that it goes uh, for four years, or is that something that uh, is particular to this report? And, uh, and, and, and how does that, uh, what does that do for, for the future? Because it, it seems to me that we do budgets on a yearly basis, so I'm a little confused by, by this. I need some clarification. Thank you. Who uh, would like to respond to that? Commissioner Beach? As the acting CAO, I feel big shoes to fill here, but, here, but I have uh, the um, chief financial officer here, here to add as well. In terms of the normal way that we do this, we do do multiple years in the four years because in terms of coming up with strategies for council, it's very difficult to sometimes implement strategies in one year in increments. So we have been going forward with this four year. So it's a rolling four years. Every year we project out as well. It will allow staff to come back to council and propose strategies on how to meet this requirement. So we already know from the information that's been provided to council that this will require some strategies in terms our, our budgets are very tight right now and we will have to propose back a number of strategies. So we know that in terms of implementing those, we need a, a longer time frame in order to get there. Um, some of the strategies will take a number of years to implement as well. So yes, this is the way that we normally propose it back to council. In terms of actually approving the budget, you do that on an annual basis. So even though there's a four-year projection, we bring back the actual budget in, in the year before, and you approve that on a one-year increment at this point. Um, if council wanted to look at multiple budgeting, um, that's something that uh, we, we could probably look at in the future, but we normally just do the one year. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate the, uh, the response. So I guess this is the, the status quo, the four-year uh, multiple rolling uh, uh, 
I, I, you know, I understand the answer. The, and I understand where the 2.5% um, came from, from our discussions. Uh, the thing that, I, that I'm concerned about is whether we're going to find ourselves in a, in a pickle. For example, we've also talked about uh, one of our strategic priorities that is uh, under number two here was uh, open, open government, which may include changes as the way that we approach budgeting in general. Uh, and I'm wondering if that could possibly make this pr practice of doing four years at a time, uh, it w w whether it would be in conflict with that with that practice, so that maybe as we as we look at open government, we might need to reevaluate the practice of setting tax rates so far in advance. I don't know if you want to answer that. Or not. Commissioner Beach. So in terms of the process, um, we will, if Council approves this, we will come back with a document before the actual budget process to prepare a number of strategies for you to consider. And when you approve those strategies, those are the ones that get included into the operating budget. So if you look at those strategies and don't see that there are enough of them to continue on that this rate of tax increase, then you can provide different direction to staff. Um, there will have to be probably a multiple, like a, a over years, because we know that in order to find these savings, it isn't just in the first year, it's savings in the first year, additional savings in the second, additional in the third, additional in the fourth. So if at some point when council sees some of these strategies come back and you think that you need to amend the direction to, to staff, you can do so, um, and it will happen prior to setting the next budget. So you'll be given that opportunity once you see some of the strategies that come back. Thank you, that's very helpful. Councillor Neal. Just very quickly, a uh, bit of a cautionary tale. One of the curses of public finance is always that it's easier to find capital than it is to find operating. And that's at every level of government. And with us committed to a 2.5%, I personally am going to be asking staff as capital budget projects come forward what the impact on operating will be. I support uh, an airport but an expanded airport is at expanded operating costs. Uh, before I consider a third crossing, I, I will need to kind of know what the impact on our operating budget is because we may, even with some largesse from the upper tier governments, find the money to do some of those projects. But then on a continuing basis, we need increased uh, operating costs to maintain those and and too often I think we and other levels of government build things uh, with operating dollars that come to us more easily or have in the past and then have all kinds of problems maintaining them with the additional operating costs. So that was my cautionary tale. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. Okay, thank you. Um, I know we had, a, we had a very good debate and good discussion at strategic planning on the tax rate. Uh, I think that we've set a very bold and ambitious target. It will not be easy to hit. We're really not setting, in my view, a 2.5% tax rate. We're really setting a 1.5% tax rate because we have 1% that goes to capital. So we're actually talking about an annual budget that is coming in under inflation. So that's going to require some strategic thinking, some tough choices, uh, and ultimately what would make this easiest is if we can encourage more growth. Because if we get more growth in our community and growth in our tax assessment, that's gonna make this whole job easier. And I think that that really then ties into one of our strategic priorities about creating a smart economy and trying to get that economic development to take off. So um, I think it is, we have not chosen the easiest path, but I think we've chosen the right path. And so I'm um, happy to support this. Thank you. 
I return the chair. Thank you. So no other comments? Councilor Hutchison. I'll just say that I disagree with the remarks just made by the mayor because I don't think this is um, a good or responsible way to budget. And I think the setting the rate without knowing what the results are when you've been told already that to maintain services, especially frontline services, and um, do anything even um, additional at a very minor rate, we've been told that we need to have 3.1, 3.3% increases. So it would seem to me that we should have the menu of cuts that make that first. And that's, that's necessary, and that's the way I think most organizations would work. They would set some idea what they needed and, and, uh, and work from there. So we have a number. We have a responsible number from staff already, and they've been telling us the same thing for three years. So I think that if you say 1.5%, it's less than inflation, you know at some point that the rubber has to hit the road. There has to be cuts. And the question is what? So I find it to be a blind, a blind and abstract way to budget and not to be commended to anybody. And so I'm not going to vote for this. Councillor George. Thank you. Through your worship, I'll counter the, the previous speaker and say I don't agree with him. Um, <laughs> you know, we went through this strategic planning, by the way. I wouldn't let you run my business that way. But anyways, um, I think that we have to send a message out and uh, we have to do our due diligence and, we, and that's exactly what we've been asked to do. That's why we're sitting at this horseshoe. Um, we're simply asking the chief administrator to look at options and strategies that would allow us to get to 2.5. As we discussed previously, it doesn't mean that we'll have to be able to hold the 2.5, but we need to know what the options are. So then we can evaluate do we look at potential service cuts? Hopefully not. But it also allows us to, or I should say, our senior staff to at least attempt to look at some efficiencies that maybe yet we haven't discovered. And uh, again, give us that opportunity to evaluate uh, what exactly we need to do with our, our tax, our future tax increases over the next four years. I don't disagree with what the previous speaker said in regards to the numbers that were put out by staff, but those were numbers that were put out if we were to hold with what we have today and the way we're still running business. So in order to get things back to where we as council have given direction to at least look at, that's where we have to look at how we may do things differently. There's always other options out there and you can't just, you have to think outside the box. Stop getting trapped inside this little bamboo box, you know. Cut, cut the barriers down and get out of it and, and look at uh, addressing what we may be able to do to uh, look at bringing in a much, uh, much needed tax decrease to, uh, to our residents, which we've been doing a great job on, with, especially with the last council, uh, considered, considering where we were you know, 15 years ago when we first amalgamated as a new city. Tax increases were much, much higher and very hard to, uh, to deal with, but uh, we're, we're making a... a um, we're, we're looking at strategies now that we can look at uh, ways of trying to uh, increase revenue sources and decrease the, the, the impact on the tax base. So I think it's a good strategy and we need to move it forward. Thank you. So, Councillor Turner. Thank you, Mayor, and through you. I think we have to look at this, and I think we can't vote on it blindly and just pick a number out of our hat and say 3.1 and not look at the menu, as we discussed in strategy. We have to look at the menu, we have to see what's on the menu. So I support this and I'm gonna vote for it, thank you. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, I will also be supporting this, and uh, part of the reason is, is because at some point you have to just kind of pick a starting point, and I think that that's what this does, and I don't know about everybody else, but I heard quite clearly campaigning that the tax rate is something that affects most people quite closely. And if you were to knock on most doors and ask them what's the one thing you're gonna hear the most comments on, it's gonna be the tax rate. And as the mayor pointed out, 
we're realistically saying one and a half percent because one percent goes to, to capital and, and infrastructure. So if we say two and a half percent, I guarantee at two and a half percent, we're still going to get comments from a lot of people that that's too high. So if, if, if this is our target, and with looking at what staff's going to do to try to help us get there, I think that's smart. I think it makes us a smart city. It's we have to grow our economy. We know that. And we know that growth is going to be what allows us to reach this target. And I think that when we were at the strategic planning sessions, we all looked at what came out of that and we realized that if we can make that happen, then this is not unrealistic. So for those reasons, and based on how like excited I am about what came out of our strategic planning sessions, I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm not going to support this. Um, I think just I'll summarize very briefly. Uh, I think we're being somewhat contradictory. We, we talk a lot about empowering staff and not taking up a lot of their time. And here we are proposing to, to sort of take away um, a lot of their ability to do the work that we're asking them to do uh, if we don't allow for a larger increase than this 2.5 which seems frankly very arbitrary based on all the conversations we've had about what we want to see happen in this city so thanks councillor allen thank you your worship um uh just in response to the previous speaker and um uh, councillor holland i i agree with you we don't want to take up too much time but i believe this exercise would be undertaken no matter what target we would set because we would still have to have a strategy in place to meet whatever target. If we didn't set some sort of target, um, then we wouldn't have to have any strategies, and so then we wouldn't have to do that. So I kind of agree, but like in this sense, there has to be a, a target uh, in order to do this. Uh, we have a we have a city that uh, accomplishes quite a bit. Um, and provides a lot of great services uh, for, for our community. And um, we have to make sure that we balance that with, uh, our, our, um, with what we ask of our citizens to contribute to the pot. And we have to make sure that we also remain a place that's attractive to live. When we talk about in our strategic planning sessions, we talk about a livable city. Actually, people look at the tax rates of their homes and their future homes is part of that. And a lot of eyebrows get raised when they look at Kingston. It doesn't matter what district you live in. And growth is part of the solution, as the mayor has indicated. And we have to um, continue to try and find those strategies and direct staff to think uh, and be innovative uh, in the ways that we approach finding efficiencies. The, the normal ways of finding efficiencies are starting to get used up. And so we have to say, this is still important. We have to look outside the box, uh, the bamboo box, as Councillor George has said. So um, I, uh, I, I think we need to have a target uh, to work towards. I don't think we have to hold ourselves uh, to, we don't want to be cutting the essential services that you know our city has relied on, but we do have to take a look at our complement of services and say what our citizens telling us is important. And that's hopefully what we'll see in the menu that the CAO, who unfortunately isn't here today, um, will be able to bring back to us. And uh, that's why I will continue to support the strategy that we uh, set out at our strategic planning sessions. Okay. With that, Councillor Candid. Thank you. Through your worship, uh, I agree with almost everything that Richard had said. I had a few points that I had to scratch off that uh, he, he, he went over. But I think that essentially all we're, all we're stating with this is that, as Councillor Allen said, we're starting off with a, we need a, a benchmark to start at. But I think that a lot of people will ask us uh, over the course of, uh, of being on council, what did you do to fight for me and my taxes? And this is a way to show that we're doing the best that we can. We're not necessarily making any promises, but we're doing the best that we can to keep taxes low. And uh, is, can we keep it at two and a half? If we can, terrific. But at least we're showing some solidarity towards our constituents that we're doing the best we can to keep taxes low. So for that reason, I support this more. So with that, we will call the vote on item one.
And that carries by a vote of nine to four. <laughs> Item number two is the strategic priorities and implementation plan. We'll call the vote. Still one person to vote, and that carries unanimously. We have no information reports. We have no information reports from members of council. Miscellaneous business. Uh, motion number one, that the resignation of Ms. Teresa Richard from the Municipal Accessibility Advisory Committee be received with regret. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councilor Shell, seconded by Councilor Osanic. Please vote. And that carries. That as requested by ALS, Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis Canada, Council proclaimed June 2015 as ALS Awareness Month in the city of Kingston, moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Councillor McLaren. Please vote. And that carries. That as requested by the ALS Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis Canada, Council approved the raising of the ALS flag on Saturday, May 30th, 2015 in Confederation Basin in the city of Kingston. Moved by Councillor Bohm, seconded by Councillor Neal. Please vote. And that carries. On to new motions. Number one, moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Deputy Mayor Holland. Whereas our previous council passed a bylaw to reduce speed limits in all school zones and by post-secondary institutions, and whereas a similar rationale for reduced speeds would apply to roads adjacent to Kingston parks and recreational facilities, therefore be it resolved that city traffic planners in consultation with parks and leisure prepare a report with recommendations in order to facilitate this policy to go to EITP no later than Q3 2015. Councilor Neal. Thank you. Um, this actually came out of um, one of the rare motions last term, I believe, passed unanimously, and that was through EITP. We recommended that school zones allow, uh, that we would indeed reduce speed limits to 40 kilometers. Uh, the default speed limit in Ontario in all municipalities is 50 kilometers. Uh, very shortly after that passed unanimously, uh, being, a, I think, a very sensible motion, people, uh, some people started to ask the very sensible question, uh, if that makes sense in a school zone, why wouldn't it make sense in a recreational area next to a park with a with an ice rink uh, next to a recreational area. Uh, I held off on doing anything because at that time, the province was reported to be considering making 40 kilometers the default speed limit right across all municipalities. Uh, Default means that you don't have to put up signage on every block. Uh, but the, I understand from city traffic uh, staff that the province has gotten cold feet about that proposal and it probably won't be coming forward in the immediate future. So what this is attempting to do is asking staff uh, to come back to EITP in the fall with a report as to what would be a sensible policy to apply for our parks and recreational areas. Um, clearly, if, for instance, the school zones, I don't believe we lower the speed limit to 40 kilometers along Sir John A where it bypasses LC. I mean, clearly there are arterial roads and things that, areas that with the guidance of staff, we'd be able to, to not necessarily include in, in the recommendation. 
But for many other areas, I think this makes perfect sense. And I know that uh, I've had a number of calls around Compton and around Victoria Park with concerns about, about the traffic speed in those areas. Clearly, uh, this would create some need for signage, but not an exorbitant amount of signage. So I'm hopeful that this, like the previous motion, might have an opportunity to pass unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Schell. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Um, this is another one where I wish we had a lot more information in the beginning. Um, just, I must admit, I was concentrating on Wellington Street a lot this week, so I didn't, I read it and I thought, don't we have like 200 parks in the city or more? Could I, I will ask staff that as a question. Approximately how many parks are there in the city of Kingston, please? We have over 200 parks in the city. So, and, and they're spread out obviously throughout the city. So I, I understand that we tend to think of the ones in the urban area, but we do have a number of ones that are in the rural area and that would obviously have some different implications. Um, thank you. And, and even mentioning LCVI made me, and you mentioned Victoria Park, then I thought of Brock Street. There are so many implications to this that haven't really been fleshed out that I think you're asking staff to do, um, but we have no idea what it would cost. So I'm, boy, I'm finding it problematic. <laughs> it's because it seems to be, it's a, it seems to be a much bigger motion than what's, uh, what seems to be here. Parks, recreational facilities, I think we're probably speaking around 250 spots in the city of Kingston. And we know from dealing with traffic, at least I do, with traffic, that uh, the more changes you have, the more stop signs, the more variations, the more it becomes very confusing for drivers. So you tend to need more signs, more directions. So this is one that I, let, I can agree with in theory, but... I don't think I can in practice unless it came back a lot more uh, fully fleshed out. Thank you. Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Uh, I also had some of the concerns that Councillor Shell brought up, and although I have small children, um, I know that playing in parks is something where you just sometimes see people ripping by there, and I also get my fair share of traffic complaints and everything. So. Bearing that in mind and, re and really liking the intent of where this is going, I'd like to propose an amendment. And there's one little picky spelling error, which I'll get at. But it's that the word rational in the second resolve clause be deleted and replaced with rationale. And I think that's what you, what you meant there. <laughs> and then that the words parks and leisure to be deleted and replaced with the director of recreation and leisure, leisure. That the words facilitate this policy be deleted and replaced with the following there too, to evaluate options for reduced speed limits or other traffic calming measures, including... Can, Councillor Bohm, can I just stop oh, you sure. there? Uh, just as you're reading it, it yeah. might be easier if... Oh, there we go. Oh, sure. So we'll just try to follow along with you as you're it's, reading that. Okay, so I'll, do, I'll be in the third bullet there. So, oh, oh, that works too. So basically, I'll just finish the... And then that the word... Or sorry, measures including an analysis of changes to the existing policy within approved budget envelopes, and then that the word EITP, and this is again a picky thing because it's an acronym, be deleted and replaced with the Environment, Infrastructure and Transportation Policies Committee. And then I also had some concerns about the timeline um, based on like the workload that we have for staff right now. So that the words Q3 2015 be deleted and replaced with Q1 2016. And then the motion as amended would read, therefore be it resolved that city traffic planners in consultation with the Director of Recreation and Leisure prepare a report with recommendations to evaluate options for reduced speed limits or other traffic calming measures including an analysis of changes to the existing policy with an approved budget envelopes to go to the Environment, Infrastructure and Transportation Policies Committee no later than quarter one, 2016. Okay, so... I, uh, so I, there that is would a, be friendly, by the way. I, uh, okay, I can appreciate this yeah. friendly. That's way too much, uh, way too many changes to make it friendly. So what we'll do is we'll formalize it. So there's a motion to amend that's been put on the floor. Um, I'm happy to second that. I think I was listened, listed as seconder. So any discussion on the amendment? It's friendly, right? Any discussion on the amendment? Okay, Councillor Neal. 
Uh, I apologize, you caught an, a former English teacher with a typo. You're right, rationale needs an E on it. Uh, I support the amendment. My uh, intention was to get this to happen sooner rather than later, but uh, clearly it's, it is a complex issue. So I'm quite comfortable with the amendment as proposed. Anybody else on the amendment? Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd like to compliment Councillor Bohm on excellent, thorough work, uh, not only with the spelling, but but with the <laughs> uh, with the implications of of what the intent of the motion. I mean, Councillor Neil said it very plainly by saying it's a friendly amendment because it it is. I, I really think this is the kind of uh, cooperation that we all want to see, where there's a good idea, it needs a little bit of polishing. Councillor Bohm went and did that uh, really well, and, and that's great, and I'm supporting the amendment. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the motion to amend? And seeing none, we will call the vote. And that carries unanimously. Councillor Bohm, you still have the floor if there's anything else you wish to say. No, thank you, Your Worship. Seeing no other comments, Councillor Allen. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to comment that um, uh, road speed is some, and road safety is something that I've brought up before. Uh, I think it's something we're hearing quite a bit to make our communities more livable. We do want to make sure our roads are still efficient, and I think uh, this motion as amended uh, gives staff the flexibility to apply policies in the space that they need to and uh, create uh, recommendations that work for our neighborhoods. And uh, as you know, in the rural area, a 40 limit beside some of our very long uh, parks, like say Grass Creek Park on Highway 2, may not go over so well. Um, so, um, uh, but, uh, I, but I appreciate the intent of the motion and the amendment, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these improvements to benefit our community and our city going forward. Okay, so we will call the vote on the motion as amended. Please vote. And that carries. Motion number two, moved by Deputy Mayor Holland, seconded by Councillor Osanek, whereas Fort Henry Investments Limited is applied for a zoning bylaw amendment for the purpose of developing a business park and commercial development at 1122 John Counter Boulevard, and whereas concern was expressed by residents at the public meeting conducted December 4th, 2014, in respect to numerous site plan issues, such as noise, fencing, separation distance, garbage placement, lighting, and landscaping, and whereas the delegation of authority bylaw allows for council to bump up site plan control applications to planning committee, and whereas this procedure will provide transparency and allow the details to be debated in a public forum, therefore be it resolved that the site plan control application for 1122 John Counter Boulevard by Fort Henry Investments Limited be bumped up to the planning committee. Deputy Mayor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. So, Quite quickly, I'll just do a little bit of background here. Um, this uh, proposed zoning bylaw amendment was happened, you know, two days after swearing in as a new councillor. Um, so there was a lot to learn in terms of site plan and planning procedures at that time. Uh, there was a lot of concern expressed at the public meeting about various issues in this development. Um, for the most part, residents are supportive of the, the zoning bylaw amendment because this is a parcel of land that was previously zoned for heavy commercial use, heavy industrial use is now being changed uh, to support business residential developments. Um, as you can see on the map on page 213 in your, in your package, that this is a substantial development, uh, if you look at the scale, a substantial development in all ways, in that the residents of in and around the Wycliffe Crescent area, most of them um, currently are backing on to this space, which has been undeveloped. Um, therefore, it's fairly unused, you know, brambles, green space, that sort of thing. Uh, nevertheless, quiet, no lighting, all of these issues that would be uh, brought, that they did bring forward with the proposed development, um, the, the zoning bylaw amendment. And so 
also something to consider is the fact that the, the elevation of this area, so their properties back down into this space that will be developed. And while, as I mentioned, people are mainly supportive of the types of development that we'd be looking at there, such as um, restaurants or car wash, convenience store, that kind of thing, as you can understand, there's lots of sort of traffic issues that come up when you're thinking about moving cars around in and around that area. Um, so they're concerned with lighting because of all of the, the issues of sort of currently backing into that space and having their backyards um, with the angles involved, no one is really very confident at this stage that their views and sight lines will be protected. So that's one of the reasons, an example of one of the reasons um, that, that I would like to see this bumped up so that there could be more of an opportunity to have this conversation at planning committee. Um, also something to keep in mind, recently we've, we've learned that QECVI, which is the property just um, in front of, was out on the other side of the, the Crescent area, is being redeveloped. And that would obviously cause, let's say there are lots of res restaurants in the area, a fair bit of pedestrian traffic, and pathways are also something to consider. That would be something, that's something that's changed since we first started talking about uh, this zoning bylaw amendment as well. So again, something else to have a good conversation about at planning committee. So for all of these potential um, impacts, I really encourage council to support bumping this up so we can have uh, a, a bigger conversation. And I just like to say thanks to everyone who's helped in this and especially Councillor Osanic who has helped me understand the bumping up and all of these planning issues. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to give the mayor an opportunity to say I told you so. Uh, the previous policy was any single councillor could ask for a bump up. At the time when this uh, alteration was made, so it needed a mover and a seconder and a motion of council, I didn't support that. It clearly has worked very well. Uh, I and all members of the previous council deferred to the district councillor, and I can't remember a bump up that ever didn't pass. And I will always support a district councillor who requests a bump up uh, because I think it's our opportunity to give the community and the residents an opportunity to see uh, the decision process in a public forum. So, so you can say I told you so or you can just smile. But I think it's a good policy that we have. Thank you. Thank you. There's nobody else who wishes to speak. We'll call the vote. And that carries. Uh, for the next motion, given it's moved by myself and seconded by the deputy mayor, I'll ask the previous deputy mayor, Councillor Bohm, if you could take the chair. Yes, Your Worship. So moved by Deputy Mayor Holland, seconded by Councillor Osan. Oh, wow. Oops, wrong one. My apologies. So moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Holland, that staff from the Ministry of Transportation and its consultant, MMM, be authorized to brief Council on Tuesday, May 19th, 2015, on the preliminary design slash environmental assessment study results for both the Kingston Road 38 interchange and the Highway 15 interchange. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. And that passes with a vote of, or unanimously. And with that, I'll return the chair to you, Your Worship. Thank you. Are there any notices of motion tonight? Seeing none, minutes. Moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor Candid, that the minutes of the City Council meeting number 2015-13 held Tuesday, April 21st, 2015, be confirmed. Please vote. And that carries. So we have uh, some tabling of documents. We have a number of communications. Is there any other business? So with that, Mr. Clerk, I will ask for bylaws.
So it's moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor Cand in the report that files one through eight and 11 be given their first and second reading. Please vote. That carries. It's moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor Baum, that Clause 11.34 of Bylaw 2010-1 be suspended for the purpose of giving Bylaw 3 three readings. Please vote. And that carries. It's moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor Hutchison, that bylaw 3 through 11 be given third reading. Please vote. Still one person to vote. That carries. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Stroud, seconded by Councillor George. Please vote. Still one person to vote. And that carries. Thanks very much.